persona from Tonga is fucking funny. I'm glad that he dressed up in blackface, but I also want public hospitals. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> I fucking hate tennis. I don't like the tennis. Who likes tennis. No one likes tennis. Even Novak Djokovic, Djokovic doesn't like tennis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tony Abbott, I liked the fact that he was kind of just this like repressed bishop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bishop. I, the bishop. He was a bishop. <laughs> well, you just had COVID. I did. What? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. It's pretty. Mild. Are we gonna get Corona now? I've been holding yep. my breath this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, I gotta, I gotta admit something to you, and uh, I think you're gonna kick me out of the house. I've been on a uh, plant-based diet for the last five months. <laughs> I can feel the soy oh. all throughout my body. No wonder you caught COVID, you fucking girl. <laughs> <laughs> G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cancel Me Now. We're here for another great episode. We've got uh, the great man Bluey as always. Hey mate, how you doing? Cool, mate. Neil Cole Hack, Car Friendly Geordies. Welcome to the show for the very first time. Yes. Thank you for making the trip up. Now, Mr Shank, so I hear you've just had a trip with your extended family. No, oh, and it was whimsical. It truly <laughs> was. Man, I don't know why I do this anymore. Have you guys noticed that Christmas after the age of six gets a bit old? Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, yeah don't you reckon? Like as an adult... Christmas is all about kids. Christmas is all about yeah. kids. And then you realize when you're a little bit older, everyone who's older in my family is an alcoholic. This is a very, this is, <laughs> you know what it's, I mean? It's, it's, like, it's like how booze. like, huh? mm. it's ham and booze. Like, yeah. That's all you get. And the ham through. is glazed in booze. Glazed, yeah, and there's and just this, yeah. I put, uh, I make this brandy cream. It was, it was Claire's uh, grandmother who passed away's recipe. And you, it's basically just cream, sugar, and brandy. But I make it to the point where you <laughs> just... Brandy cream. It's out. great. <laughs> it's great. You put it with a bit of fruitcake, mate. Um, it's a, it is an Australian delicacy. <laughs> and apparently Claire's um, auntie at one point, back in the day, she had too much of it, got pulled over and blown blown hot on the breathalyzer because she had too much brandy cream. Ooh, a phone number. And she was, um, she was a very religious person, so she didn't drink. But she smashed the brandy cream. She said to the officer, no, 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 this is brandy cream. The brandy cream, my, my auntie's brandy cream's got me going. So it's a it's a delicacy, but it's dangerous. They talk about all these other delicacies all over the world, like tarantulas, fucking Claire's grandma's brandy cream. You can't have too much of a good thing. <laughs> yes, you can. But you said before the podcast, that. Um, Geordie's that you ha- you, your family was a bit harsh at you. Well, they are every Christmas now. Every time I go up there, I'm just like, okay, here we go. I'm going to get one positive comment this Christmas. And no, that's not my Christmas gift yet again. It's Harry Potter socks because I liked them when I was 10. You know? like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so is there one person? You're right, you're like, what, what? Come on. Do you, clothes. Do you think I can't afford big, clothes? Bigger ones every year. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I used Size to be now. <laughs> I used to be against the whole socks and undies thing, but now I just yeah. rely on Christmas for my socks and undies, and yeah. it's good. Harry As a stash. Now. Okay, As that makes stash. sense. Like to store it for the year. Because my like I, acorns I, if you're a I had these undies the other day. I went for a run, because I'm a fucking fitness freak. Went for a run and my undies were almost see through. So they had to go in the bin. A chafe. Uh, yeah. Had yeah. to go in, and Dixon pulled them out and smelled them. <laughs> That's not even a joke. She's a filthy animal. <laughs> Pulled him out. She goes. Oh. <laughs> That's all. I'm, I'm marrying that. How awful. That's something you guys have in common because I know you often speak of your family's disappointment in you. Oh, they all. <laughs> they all hate <laughs> you. No, they don't hate me. They hate, but they're just not real proud. They're all like. <laughs> right, right. Okay, yeah. It's Disappointed. Let me put it this way. Like, okay. So <laughs> my brother Jonas, who's 21 now, he plays footy with Bluey. Mm. Very good footballer, very good at what he does. Um, studying political science and business. Mad labour dude, mad shill like you. Mm-hmm. And still need to make that a t-shirt. And still do, you're right. Really do. I really do. And he will do anything and my parents will be so proud of him. I'll sell out 2,000 seats <laughs> at the Enmore <laughs> Theatre. <laughs> and mum and dad are like, yeah, that's nice. Still yeah. making your little videos, yeah. mate. Yeah. <laughs> I love when people say that. You still doing those videos? Like, yes. Do you know Do you whenever, every fucking week, whenever my parents go, go, come go, go. to a live show, they'll um, see me afterwards and say, "Oh, look, the audience really enjoyed it." <laughs> it's the most passive that's aggressive a great way to say. <laughs> that's a great back. We end. hated it, that's but awesome hey, everyone end. else was laughing. Good for you. Uh, yeah, you're still doing your that. family doesn't even outright come out and say, "I'm not a fan." No, they do it's it in a passive like aggressive that. way. That's worse. That's yeah. worse. Yeah. What exactly does your family what, so what what were they saying to you at Christmas? This is the catchphrase of uh Christmas as an adult for me. You ready? 
Why do you have to be so rude? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the classic. You have to swear so much. You have to swear <laughs> so much. To which the answer is yes. Yeah. That's I'm how sorry, people talk. That's like, how people the talk. reason we're all here mm. is because of Fs and C-bombs. That's yes. it. That's why we're having this nice discussion now. Mate, I, when I first started making videos on Facebook, I remember editing one one day and I said, no, I've said fuck too many times. And then I went to footy training. And that's just how people talk. That's mm. how Australian men talk to each other. Mm. It's fucking, how was the fucking weekend? Did you have a fucking good time? I had a couple of fucking beers, this fucking woman, the fucking. It's endearing. It's just, a, it's like a breath. It's like a, it's, it's a pause and a sentence. It's a thinking it's, word. It's a thinking yeah. word. I don't know mm. how that happened. I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> it, it is pretty shameful of our culture, I suppose, <laughs> but that's what it is. That's, that's where it is. is. Exactly. That's how it's, Austra- and I, I get it from American people who watch my videos. They're like, you say fuck a lot. I'm like, yeah, you say, nice. you say a lot. Well, they're yeah. dirty on that. They hate, they hate the word. And it's a great word. It's a You know what the best way to use the word is? If you use it against a female. Because dudes hear it all the time. I got stitched up on stage one night with a guy called Kyle Legacy. A very good friend of mine. You know Kyle. Yep. And um, I've known him for a long time. He used to book me in Sydney when I first started doing stand-up. Great dude. Um, and we were in Perth. Yeah, yeah. Perth Fringe Festival 2019. Our first... Fringe Festival I ever did. Oh, Adelaide was before that, then Perth. And it was very exciting. I did like five really good shows, happy, all that type of shit. And he said, hey, mate, do you want to come past? Uh, he's from Liverpool. I was like, hey, mate. Oof, that's fucking terrible. <laughs> can you <laughs> do a legacy you. accent? Oh, I can, can fucking have a goal. <laughs> that's great. Bad. I'm Not Carl bad. Legacy. I'm Carl Legacy. Oh, I'm fucking love you, Aussies. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Ignore me. Has he got a lot of big hair? Yeah. Yeah, I remember That's I cool. saw him at the Ocean View once. Big very, afro, very always cool. wearing NBA jerseys. <laughs> the widest his, man alive. His it's Instagram disgusting. handle, uh, LeBron James of Comedy. So Perfect. check him out. Perfect. He's very funny. He wanted to meet LeBron James. So I said, why don't you do a podcast called I Want to Meet LeBron James? And he's made like 150 episodes. Still hasn't met Still LeBron hasn't James, been. but he's doing it. He's working the, the, work in the room. So he's doing a room upstairs in this pub. It's like 12 o'clock at night. He says, man, come and, come and do a spot. Come and do a spot. I said, okay, I'll come and do a spot, five-minute spot. He said, it's the dirty night or the filthy night or whatever it was called. He said, just do your filthiest, just most heinous shit ever. And I was like, yes, that's my thing. Okay, I like that. So I get up there. So I go on stage. <laughs> I'm guns blazing. I'm off the back of five really good shows with my new hour, yada, yada, yada. Get up on stage and I say whatever it was and the room's just dead silent. There's like 20 people and just dead silent. I was like. Fuck's wrong with you people, yada, yada, yada. Just carrying on like a dickhead. I said another one. Someone in the crowd goes, can you do a joke that's not racist? And I went, well, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> sorry, but, no. Sorry, this was two minutes in. And then this, <laughs> this, it was dead set two minutes in. And this lady, she's just this young, she would have been 21, 22. She's just, and I would have been like 23, 24 mm. at that age or whatever, or that stage or whatever. And she, she's at me and she's into me and she's like, you are just not funny. So can you please do so? and I so I snap. I go, you are the biggest <laughs> alive. I bet you've never been called a <laughs> in your life. Listen here, love. You are a <laughs> great surprise. And she's just like, she can't believe it. She I said, No, you're a <laughs> people have never told you this because they're polite, but you are a <laughs> Yeah, I said, Damn. fuck the lot of you, I get off stage after oh, really? three minutes. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I was portrait <laughs> of you as Kramer's <laughs> making a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Start dropping end bombs. <laughs> Like viral videos, oh, I, oh no, Isaac, no. I have a, um, I have a portrait of me as the Kramer. I'm sure Connor will put up a photo of the Kramer. Um, and I need my to version. tell everyone I was forced to uh, crawl under the table <laughs> to begin this podcast <laughs> under a Nazi helmet. <laughs> So yeah, this yeah. is uh, all very true. You only got there that for the episode today. Yeah, no, I just <laughs> I just borrowed that Nazi helmet for today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I posted about it when I got that Nazi helmet. You did? I posted about it and people were like, oh, mate, you probably shouldn't have that. I was like, nah, well, I've got it the happens. Australian one and the American one. Yeah. Australian and British are very similar. So you've got to have the Nazi one. Everyone's Why can't you have that? What the hell? Well, I got people to People are too soft these days. <laughs> <laughs> They really are. Come on. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a great piece of memorabilia. And on top of all of that, it's the best out of all the helmets. It's an enormous piece of history. And it's still got the insignia on the side. And, yeah. it, and the place it was from in Prussia, like a massive story behind it. Looks the most weathered. Like it, he had the biggest go out of the three. Like he was well, the I'm pretty <laughs> sure <laughs> it was in the ground for 60 years. Yeah, and, he, and I'm pretty sure these guys. These it wasn't guys, his fault they lost the war. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll tell you what. He gave his hold of the motherland. 100%. He, <laughs> 
These fucking pussies over here, they got home. They, they, they you know, they looked after their helmets. That that motherfucker was in the ground. He was anyway. Put, he, put his head where you wouldn't dangle your boot. They reckon that. Oh like yeah, he's tough as an old Nazi. Oh helmet. yeah, what a what a guy. <laughs> Called the Nazi episode. Um, so I get off stage and I said to Kai, I said, "What the fuck? You said this was like, you know, the, the filthy room." And he said to me, "No, mate. I just <laughs> I set the clouds up so now I'm, I'm fucking Scottish." He said, he said to me, I've set the crowd up so they didn't laugh here. I said, don't. They said, he said to the crowd, don't laugh at a thing they say. Oh, did he? Great so he stitched me up. Great. And you've unloaded on this poor and I've woman. just, like, I Got gave you. you the short bit. I went on, I think I, I did about five or six minutes and it was all just at this one. I was like, I fucking hate you. Oh, Kramer. Like, I go, Full I go, Kramer. I'm a piece of shit. I go, I hope your mum gets cancer. I hope your dad gets cancer. I hope you die. Yes. All that type of stuff. Are you driving tonight? Have a couple more beers and then take a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this poor woman is just copped at flogging, and he's like, oh, mate. <laughs> That's a great girl. Yeah. I can't great, believe yeah. him. The full scab. Oh, man. So, it's giving me flashbacks to doing rooms of like 15 people. It's a completely different beast. That kind of stuff happens all the time. Just these kind of strange faux pas interactions that you kind of have when you go to a party and you don't know that many people, but there's a few more people around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling of doing a small crowd. Wait. And that is really uncomfortable. <laughs> it's uncomfortable for all of us. It makes your skin crawl. <laughs> Fucking ruined. Yeah, it it, it, it ruined like, me. Trip. I didn't talk to Paul uh, for a, a year after. That was ever, filthy at him. Uh, that badly, Neil? Have you ever bombed like? Horrendously. Well, because he's brown, you have to ask you fucking oh, if he's bombed. bombed. It's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> I'm off. I'm crawling out. <laughs> Back in the We're crawl space. Oh. Um, I remember one distinct show in Edinburgh actually, where uh, I it was about what forty to fifty um elderly Scotsmen in the audience. <laughs> And uh, they all knew William Wallace when he was alive. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I don't know if you. Uh, I'm sure you're, uh, you know, reasonably aware of my material. Um, I was trying to, you know, uh, get it right for Scotland, but I still <laughs> don't know if I nailed that. No laughs about forty minutes in. Beautiful. Fuck. Just dying out there. Brutal. A Scottish guy heckled me. I couldn't understand what the <laughs> fuck he said because it was, oh, it's what this fucking guy. He would have been then, a drunk too. And the whole audience laughed. Oh. And that was the biggest laugh mm. of the show. Oh. A heckle I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> fuck this. And yeah. I did another two minutes and then I, I got off. The yeah. Scottish accent is amazing. There was a TikTok I saw yesterday of this, this young brutal. girl. She was like, like she would have been three, four years old, just like learning how to talk. And she's using the toilet for the first time. The mother's outside the bathroom filming, listening to her talk. And the young girl goes, Mommy, I've just done a giant shit in the toilet and that stinks. <laughs> like, word for word, that was not, this is what this little girl but said. And her mum's <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it was the best caricature of themselves that yeah. I've ever heard. But that is how they talk in Scotland. It is amazing listening to those people. When I went over there, you just like, oh, yeah. And they're drunk a lot of the time too. It's just sort of drunk, exacerbated. Mm -hmm. racist, yeah. it's white people. My, my people. <laughs> Corner of the earth. <laughs> Son of the earth, folk. Yeah, it does sound like Newcastle. Doesn't yeah. it? It's a beautiful part of the world. It is. But that, that moment when you tell a joke and you don't get a laugh in response, like it's awkward. It's like it, because, mm. because it's a transaction that you expect and you want and you need. It's like if you went to Woolies and you went up to the checkout chick and they just sort of stood and looked at you for a while. You'd be like, no, no, you're supposed to do something. You're supposed to grab it and scan it. And But when it happens in a comedy room, it's awkward because there's so many eyes and you're oh, just yeah. like, fuck. You have a mini existential crisis. You question everything. Everything. Just in that moment. Man, I have a thousand been... Woolies chicks staring at you at once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, big year for you. Last year. That's right, yeah. This yeah, it hasn't been that big for me. It's been Thank seven fuck. days, but yeah. I didn't know that, and I don't know if, if I don't know if we can how far we can go into what happened. I know we spoke about it on the podcast last year, but you had a massive year, starting with legal action beginning just before Christmas. Mm. Like, what is that? I know I asked you this, and I've asked Neil this behind your back as well. But what does that do to Thank a person? No, nice. I wanted to I wanted to know. I wanted to know how you kept it together for that amount of time because there was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of people saying, oh, this bloke's this, that, and the other. He's doing this. He's he's a racist person. Um, he's a bad person. And then there's a there's an enormous amount of support. But all of the public, um, all of the mainstream was attacking you. 
in reality. Like they weren't, there was no one really being overly careful of being or showing nuance in the subject. Most people were just going hard after you, particularly the Murdoch press mm. and, and, and people in that realm. What was that like receiving that news before Christmas? How was your Christmas in 2020, 2020? And how did you go throughout the entire period mentally? How did you have enough endurance to go through something like that? Well, I'll tell you this is a point of comparison. Still better than spending Christmas with my family. (laughs) 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 I I was like, man, like... I, I've I've figured out the secret, and I know that everybody on an internet podcast says this, but it really, you know, you know how life boils down to just a few things that you should do over and over again to achieve success in life. Here's the 21st century version of that: just don't look at Twitter. If you do that, you've you've won. Twitter's the worst. You know what I mean? Like it's a, mm. well, Twitter it's the same. is the worst. It's, Definitely the worst. The worst. Like you get in the comments Narrowly sections on Facebook. Narrowly followed by TikTok, I've got to say. TikTok TikTok's has... getting pretty dumb. TikTok comments are <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> I do not look at them. And and Neil, you're the biggest TikToker here. Yep. You've got like over a million. And every time I look at the comments, I have that same existential crisis, question everything. So I don't do that anymore. Well, I watched one of your videos two or three days ago um, about white Young white women in Australia. Yep, Hilarious. Sounds like me. Yep. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and I read. <laughs> and most of the comments are like, you know, pretty like, oh, that was, that was good. That was good. That was good. Mm-hmm. That is us. Yeah. But then other people are like, you fucking. Yep. <laughs> How dare you? People don't understand that, you know, it's just Neil being silly. Just, just smuck it around. Exactly. They can't cop it. No. This, this no. whole part of the internet that just can't deal with any type of, type of criticism is so overwhelming to everything else. And the irony is the more they comment, the better it goes in the algorithm. So <laughs> Far keep away. commenting. Yeah. What are you doing? We love it. Hatred's yeah. amazing. Hatred is the best thing for virality. You get more people yeah. hating you, you're doing well. Yeah. Selling tickets. Every time yeah. I've been cancelled, I've sold more tickets. Yeah. You are not wrong. It's just strong emotions. That's what you're looking for, whether mm. they're positive or negative. You really don't want the response of like, eh, eh. Yeah. You don't want to be. You don't get that. You don't want to play the fence. No. You've got a hard line one or the other. Yeah. You've either got to be. It's hard to Which play the middle. Which is why in the modern age, mainstream is dying because that was the whole business model until now. It was just like, how do you keep people Everyone happy. mildly amused yeah. enough until they watch the Kellogg's ad? And the answer to that was the Big Bang Theory, you know? Yes. You can't do that on the internet. Commercial radio is the same. It's like they just music that you didn't love or you didn't hate and it would just be enough to like keep you hanging well, on until the ads like it's literally like it's what i heard that about hey ya. yeah you remember the song hey ya? like when people yeah. first heard that they were just like oh no no this is too much that was too far for commercial yeah radio. yeah it's really? crazy yeah well you were working in commercial radio only two months ago yeah 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 no. at triple m yeah uh, and announcer at triple m but like our log is just like chisel barnsey uh, powder finger, and it's like he's the song. Do you remember when you got fingered for the first time? Literally, and it's like just <laughs> or, or, or did the fingering, yeah, I guess. or did the fingering, whatever. End of it, someone was getting fingered either, or. either way. Yeah, it's just like that music that it's like you don't love it, but you don't hate it, so you'll just have it on. Like it, it doesn't matter. It's like mm. it's, it's like it's white a, noise. And that's why it's it's the same with like you know, old media. It's just it's on the way out. Mm. Like, oh. What was it like working there? Uh, it's fine. Like I'm only I'm like, like one day a week, so I do like a Saturday morning. Just like, oh, you're still there? Oh, well, no, I haven't been there for a month. I, like, no, like I you still yeah, no, you I'm don't not, have a job anymore. I'm not, I'm not after right, this. Okay. I won't be. Um, so this is like getting shifts at surf dive ski, yeah, and then yeah. when you hit seventeen, yeah. that your pay goes up a dollar, and so you get yeah, less. Exactly. Shifts. What was yeah. your best way to come back from a song? Uh, I don't know. Like, what, did you have like a like a script you had to I read? Just be like, <laughs> I was Powderfinger again. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. That was powder finger again. Wouldn't it be great if they came back? Ah, did a great show and uh, they broke what? up ten years ago. And let's uh, miss it, listen to my happiness oh, one more time. Yeah. Powder finger again, <laughs> bang and straight back. Into it. It's fucking ridiculous, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's um, <laughs> it is it is this weird way that entertainment works, where you are trying to entertain people until the ne- until they can move on from you to someone else. And TikTok's a massive one with that. Like I can spend two hours on it, mm. just going from thing to thing to thing. Like the business model of TikTok doesn't really make sense. If I come to you and I said, we're going to make people make 15 second videos, 30 second videos, and they're going to stay on there. I think the average for like 14 to 
20 year olds or something like that is something like two hours a day that's something crazy get this um more people spend sorry australians spend more hours on tiktok than any other form of entertainment or media mm. almost twice as much as netflix what Fuck. Yeah. that's yeah. insane it's crazy Does TikTok, do, you, do they advertise is there advertising on yeah TikTok? you got a few ads in there uh, now. do you get paid yeah. from tiktok no you don't get ad revenue you can do a few sponsored posts but um no ad revenue yet I'm yeah. sure it's a matter of time. Yeah. yeah well, it's like be. Facebook. Facebook never. But I, yeah, I yeah, scroll it is. I big scroll big. through TikTok and it's like, it's funny, particularly because I know some of the people, like French, you'll pop up, you'll pop up, mm. and then it'll just be a pair of tits. <laughs> like, what more do you want? The soft. <laughs> they've, <laughs> fucking awesome. they've perfected the algorithm. The <laughs> or, ch- or if the <laughs> Chinese know how to get us. <laughs> or if it's in They <laughs> really know what we want. <laughs> if it's in what French's last. video, it's <laughs> the same. <laughs> 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 That's outstanding. The soft core porn on TikTok is incredible. How does it rate? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> The problem, <laughs> the problem with it is, like, I'll be laying in bed watching TikTok or whatever, and I'll scroll through it, and then like, I'll sort of be laying in a way where if Claire's facing the same way as me, she can see what I'm watching, and she might be going to sleep already or watching something else on her phone, and she'll just see just this young girl that's 18 years old with the biggest cans of all time, <laughs> or just the ass stuff. The now, as a fellow ass eater, yep, avid, avid ass. Well. You are an arse eater too. Yeah, I remember the first, like avid, but Neil, Neil and I had this conversation over a couple of drinks years ago. <laughs> Neil just rang up. He goes, "What do you think about arse eating?" I said, oh, "I'm bad." <laughs> and he was just like, <laughs> "He just said me so and you, baby, successful. for life." Yeah, that's <laughs> it, man. Brothers. We really bonded over that. Brothers, it's like, been uphill ever since. <laughs> yeah, every time I see Neil, it's just like hey. the foundation of a good friendship. I tag ass. him in arse eating memes. Yeah, yeah sell. Of, of course, the dank ass eating memes. The dank ass eating memes. The dank ass eating memes. Um. <laughs> but there's just all over TikTok. It's asses and tits and then Neil and then Frenchie and in Frenchie's videos there's tits as well because he gets good clickbait from them. Fuck yeah. It mm-hmm. is a very interesting way to keep people entertained because it's something funny, then there's a car, then there's a cute dog, titties, car, funny, dog, titties. And Ass. they'll chuck in a, a video that you hate in there. I don't know if yeah. you get that in the yeah, 40 yeah. page. There's definitely a few now they've, they've – they have understood me. There's this guy called. I don't know how they, they, There's this guy called they, Leftist something something on TikTok, and his new thing that he keeps talking about is um, maximum wage. You'd be familiar with maximum wage, you no, vaguely. And his whole mm. thing about people shouldn't be able to earn more than a certain amount, mm. which I think is ridiculous because if you tell people you can only ever earn 250k or whatever a year, which most people won't earn in their lives, mm. that's obvious, right? You will have people who just go, well, I'm not going to fucking do medicine. What's the point? I'm not going to be a lawyer. Be I'm not going to work 80 that, hours a week. Yeah, they're not going to do it. Yeah. You saw this when people got handouts during the pandemic. People were like, I'm making more money from the handouts than going to work. That makes more sense. And it made, I would have done the exact same thing. would have done the exact same fucking thing yeah, as a, a kid. A lot of scum of the earth friends of mine that never ate better. Under yeah. That. And I was just like, <laughs> Eve, I don't fat. want to pay for your existence. <laughs> and that stems from a lot of different things. Minimum wage, um, the workers' rights being just raped when it comes to weekend rates, all that type of shit. Like the fact that I don't know if that this is the case now. Obviously, I'm I'm beyond working in. What do you want? Fucking water. Sorry, can I have some too? Yeah, it means you're Jesus. Thank you. I'm so um, <laughs> I feel like that SpongeBob meme. You know, just makes- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since I left working as like a bar attendant or whatever, like that was my lifeblood was working on weekends, penalty rates. penalty rates. And now kids don't have that. Mm. Like, And that's one of those reasons where I think that a, that, a, that a Labor government would be very good. Jordan, there are any reasons you think a Labor government would be good? <laughs> uh, well, I'm pretty on the fence on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a finger. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely true. It's not even just that. It's like every time the Libs get in, and they've gotten cleverer about it as well, because obviously they lost the election in 2007 over work choices, right? Which yes. is pretty much just stripping mm. everything except for the minimum wage away. So 100 so, years of workers' rights are gone. So work, work choices was basically you get sacked and then rehired. Was that was that basically the way that they were doing that it? That was one of the many yeah. tricks at their disposal. And it was also collective bargaining theoretically was legal, but they made it way, way harder to yeah. do it, which is just like, well, you know, okay, you, a 15-year-old, now have to negotiate with the CEO of McDonald's. <laughs> Good luck. <you> know. <laughs> 
Ronald's just in his fucking <laughs> oh, on his desk, yeah, yeah, yeah. cigar, uh, and his big yeah. fucking boots I on the thing. This just constructive discussion. <laughs> Fat cat so you're a team lever in Cabra Matter, <laughs> eh? <laughs> What's in it for me? Seven dollars. Yeah. <laughs> it was like all of that. They tried to get it in, didn't work. But now, because of the pandemic and over the last six years, they have been slowly piecemeal introducing it little bit by little bit. So what you've seen is just everyone's woken up one day and realised, I don't have any protections anymore. Yeah. It was much cleverer the way they did it this time. The big one, obviously, that got some attention was penalty rates. Not enough to get them to win the next election, but this time I think they've got a good chance because Albo has just figured out this slogan. Jobs. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I got nothing against Albo, but can that prick get some fucking speech pathology? Like speech (laughs) therapy? No, what are you talking? You don't like the lisp. I love that. You can't have a lisp and run a country. That's what. That's why Scomo is so good because yeah. you can understand him and you can have a beer with him. Uh, he was on the cricket today. I was watching the cricket. Was Fuck he? me, he chimed in, came in for a couple of overs. Oh no, terrible. Yes, well, uh, yeah. Brett Lee is uh, my favourite. Isha Gua tried to trip him up. She's like, "Have you been following the women's cricket, Scott?" And he's oh. like, "Oh, yeah, women we actually tip a lot of money into the women's." What's his missus' name? Like, What's his wife's Jenny. name? Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> Jenny told me to watch it. Terrible. Jenny watched the women's cricket for me. And yeah. Oh fuck, man. He's just makes his skin crawl. That was great. He does have that, doesn't he? It's just like Malcolm Turnbull, there was something likable about him in that he was just sort of a human Scrooge McDuck, and that was great. Tony Abbott, I liked the fact that he was kind of just this, like, repressed bishop. Um, (laughs) (laughs) A bishop. He was a bishop. (laughs) He was, he was the fucking, the, the, the bad dude in, um, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I want to hear a wartime announcement by Albo with the lisp. That'd be so good. Australia so is good. officially at war with China. <laughs> <laughs> like, My melancholy Julie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think that, Al, that one thing that I never really understood about um, Albo, and a lot of people say, oh, I've never heard of him. I don't know anything about him. And I think that's something by the, or a concerted effort by the Murdoch press to just not talk about him. And then no one even thinks about him. Like how many people can name the leader of Liberal Party? Well, he's the Prime Minister, so probably a lot more. But yeah. if you ask who's the leader of the Labor Party, most people go, I've got no fucking idea. And if the media doesn't talk about you, then that's what happens. You don't have any sway. You're not in the public mind. Tree falls in the woods and all that. I'll tell you what, though, it is a two-pronged approach because, yes, that's definitely the point, but the other one is that Albo had the exact opposite strategy of Bill Shorten. Bill Shorten was, I'll just bombard the headlines constantly with policy announcements that will force them to discuss it and then the Australian people will figure it out, forgetting that he doesn't control the press so they can just sit there and be like, oh, my God, he's promising to have viable defences in a bushfire. (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) get him out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but, like, with Albo, he's figured out that what you should do is the John Howard approach, which is what I really like, and I think he will be Labor's John Howard if he gets in, which is just, like, the less people see of you, the better. Just become background noise. Obscurity. You know? Yeah. Especially mm. because ScoMo, like, exactly what that right there. Dude, forget polling. Just ask him what he thinks. Yeah. Don't you reckon? Like, I'm pretty indicative of, like, the average. <laughs> like, I'm just working on building sites and, like, fucking, yeah. like... <laughs> And their response of just like Scobo's on the cricket. Oh, he sucks. Every, mate, we, were, we were having lunch at a pub, <laughs> and man, or my, there was four of my mates, there, and we were just like, "Fuck this!" <laughs> and, then, and then, like, I looked around, and like everyone, like there was like tables, other people just like people are running <laughs> their fingers through their hair, yeah, going like, nah. off the telly, like. And you know, you know, <laughs> you said Turner. that, Neil. I remember us talking about it because I've got this new thing about vibe and politicians. Like, obviously, yeah. as you all know, I'm like obsessed with the propaganda model. I'm obsessed with how mm, the press works. Like, that is my big obsession in life. But uh, Michael Daly was saying this to me, the former opposition leader in New South Wales, that politics really comes down to vibe <clears throat> yeah. a lot, right? Mm. Which was the same with Gladys Berejiklian. And I could point out. <laughs> now, like endless facts about how awful this woman is, and what she's have. done to the trip, and have <laughs> with and, glee, yeah. with glee, and middle and class rudeness. moms are like, but she's nice, but she's nice, she seems yeah. nice yeah. every yeah. time. Would you oh, say that if she wasn't a woman? Mean to her? Mm. Yeah, mm. but yeah. the thing is, like, I remember I was asking you mm. what you thought the vibe was of Scott Morrison, 
and it's that. Yeah. That's the vibe of him in a nutshell. And you know <sighs> if the tables have turned to the point where the blokes at the pub are going, oh, fuck, and not this bloke, yeah. then You're it's fucked. bad. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. bad. It's the just, vibe has turned. Yeah, what do you think about uh, UAP? Do you think that's uh, enough of a um, spanner to, you know, potentially turn the election around or anything like that? Not this time. Okay. Not this a lot time. Of people, they're, they're garnering a lot of support. Well, they're everywhere. Like they're everywhere. Mm. They're Craig everywhere. Craig Kelly yeah. was in my fridge the other day. Yeah. Craig <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> is, <laughs> when I watch your videos, he pops up. He all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Turn, nah, keep turning the fucking water thing because Sorry, this, this is absolute. Fun. You got to admit, Rubik's like this is a water thing. Jesus. Christ. This is a guy who hates me. Buy some fucking ad space. There you go. Yeah, I know. I know. That'll be and like your video sure. popping up in the middle of Channel Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Oh, yeah, could yeah, you yeah, could a, you buy some ad space? Oh yeah, just two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a pop, and also it goes through this amazing because we tried to get an ad on once, and <laughs> they just do the same thing. They just water it down over and over and over yeah. again, hoping that you give up. Yeah. They can't outright deny you ad space, but they can frustrate the process so much that you're just like, ah, fuck, fuck this. this. And then at the end, they're just like, all right, fine. Uh, Twelve p.m. At Cessnock, well, a lot of minds change there. You know, that's the that's how it goes. Yeah. the the way that they would shut you out would be would be so like I mean, when people get shut out of these opportunities, it happens all the time. And now with and that's a great thing that like even with Clive Palmer and with um, Craig Kelly and stuff, it's great that they have the opportunity to do this. Unfortunately, they have an enormous budget. Fuck you. Like you can get so <laughs> many views. Like I, I did an ad for this company last year and they paid me a measly amount and they put advertising spend behind it on YouTube. The video now has 28 million views on YouTube. Is Just that the ad. one? Is that the I don't know. Fuck. I will not comment in case they want to pay me <laughs> more. <laughs> 28 million views. And they had three different ads. And the other ones have got like 10 and 15 million. So I don't know how much they paid to get that in front of those eyes, but it was a lot, lot more than what they paid fucking me. <laughs> they paid me. <laughs> and they said to me, "No, no." I can feel you about this. Too. It's I was not so the place to hear your financial grudges, mate. We, we they, had nothing to do with this, but dude, okay, they paid me for a day's <laughs> work. Rapable. Then this is gonna to, to the average battler. This is gonna sound like the biggest bitch of all oh, time. Oh yeah, they, listen. To this, these are with the peanuts that you got. Listen they paid me under ten thousand dollars for a day's work, and I'm filthy. <laughs> fucking three and a half hours work. But they got nearly thirty million views. Fuck man. Can you imagine if they still had penalty rate? <laughs> <laughs> I've been robbed. <laughs> Boy, you're all good, mate. You're all right. <laughs> I was filthy about I, that. I saw a yeah, good article right. the other day. When and I they, gave, they wanted to give me fucking, they said, oh, well, well, if you want some more money, we'll give you free tickets to the tennis. I fucking hate tennis. I don't like the tennis. Who likes no tennis? No one likes tennis. <laughs> Even Novak, Novak Djokovic, Djokovic doesn't like tennis. <laughs> yeah. He likes tennis. Fuck Novak. Oh. I put up this post last night about how bad of a person Novak Djokovic is. Tongue in cheek, yeah. you know, sarcasm. I had all these, is he from Serbia? Yep. All these Serbians, you're fucking cunt. You don't want to fuck with the Serbians. You don't <laughs> no, want to fuck with the No, you don't want to fuck with It was a joke. They've, uh, they've had some wars there, mate. You don't want to like, fuck with the Serbians. I was like, no, I'm on his side. It was a joke, you fucking idiot. It's pretty much Tesla and Djokovic, and that's all they've that's got. It. And if you, if, you, if you fuck with them, they're after you. <laughs> I was so scared. But, um, Have you guys seen Baltic YouTube? That's incredible. That's your new YouTube hole. Okay. Go look at that. It's just chat roulette but it just goes between like a Greek and a Turk yeah. and they can't really speak English either of them, but they're trying to debate just sort of just like, you're Greek, you're Greek, you fucking whore. I fuck your grandmother. I fuck your mother as well. Yeah, but how come we have Hagia Sophia? How come we have Hagia Sophia? What? What? Fuck you. Fuck you, motherfucker. Like instantly. Like, you know? <laughs> It's so good. It's just, just, dude, just DNA hatred. Rob's you know what I mean? Like great into their bones. I'm obviously doing an episode, doing an episode I, on that. That's <laughs> fucking outstanding. Jesus. I love that the first thing people learn when they're learning English are the swear words. Yeah. Like like most someone other, most other languages too. Fuck that's you, all man, they know, the obviously. You. It's the first thing I ask if you're ever like learning, like how do I say fuck? Like are your yeah, friends, yeah, like yeah. how do I not ask where the train station is? Like how do I say fuck? Well, shit, say fuck. It's hilarious. That's great. Yeah, I love that shit. Question about um, the left side of politics. I know you don't like left or right, but no, I don't. 
<laughs> Thank you for prefacing that. But go on with these terms. <laughs> As someone who's been labelled far, far right mm. and super far right mm. and owns a Nazi helmet. <laughs> <laughs> On. <laughs> Proudly displayed in shot as well, you know? Yeah. It's not a secret like a lot it of... It looks a little bit higher than the others just quietly as well. <laughs> I well, I was going to put it on the bull. Read into that what you will. I was going to put it on the bull. Um, <laughs> I didn't do that. Adam Greentree gave me that. And um, <laughs> so I want to know, because this is my fear, I think the Labor government would be better for the people of Australia. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I don't overly like the Liberals at all. But I worry about the people that come with a Labor government. These people that are just, they love the culture wars. They are obsessed with gender identity. They're obsessed with every single topic that mm. consumes people's lives but doesn't actually change anything. Inner the, city wankers. Inner city wankers. <laughs> the latte sippers. Like all the people we were laughing about before the podcast in, in Byron Bay. We were talking about yeah. that before. All the people in cities, all the people who are – um, who are quote un, unquote woke, those people, the people that attach themselves to the Labor Party. Does that concern you? Do you think have you ever have you ever thought of thought about what comes with what's the baggage? You want to say something? No, I just want to say, don't you think Jordan has kind of proven that the Liberals have that much of a side to them as well? They're being the ones calling him racist yep. and trying to get him cancelled and Do they do that though because it's proven that Do they do that though because it works? The reason that they're doing that, and this is much more sinister, this is the whole thing that people don't really understand about the culture war, right? Which is that it is constructed by people that are much smarter than you or I, you know? And constructed in the US first off to win votes. We talked about this on our podcast, Neil, about how mm. pretty much in the US, the Democrats and the Republicans long ago forgot the working class. And so the way that they garner votes is just by identities. That's pretty much it. Um but that's obviously moved over to here. What the Liberals are doing by saying, he's racist, he's sexist, you have to distance yourself. I didn't realise this. What they're trying to do is with these new laws where they're trying to shut down the internet because they've realised we don't control the internet like we control the press and word is getting out that is counter to our narrative, they're trying to find excuses to shut it down. Now... In the law that they introduced that was about social media, the phrase, I can't remember what it is, but it's like, uh, if it's menacing or harassing, we have the full right to get rid of whatever the channel is, whatever the video is, that's what they're saying, right? And then they're just like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, because it's just like if a reasonable person thinks it's menacing yeah, or harassing. The, the, the reasonable the reason, person yeah. was a very interesting way to word that Wasn't particular it? section. And it's not Wasn't a reasonable it? person. It's the, the, what is it, the e-safety commissioner. One yes. person. One individual. One individual. That ultimately they, gets they to appoint. decide. Yeah. Yep. Not voted in. This, this lady, they're just like, yeah. she's yeah. going to decide yeah. everything for everybody. Yeah. Mm. And we decide who that woman is. I wonder what her political leniency is going to be. What they were trying to do, and I didn't realise this, and I was amazed how much Labor has been silent about this. Not that I've, they're always just being like, who's got connections? I don't have any connections with them. I interviewed them once. I've got more connections with Frenchie. I've spoken to him three times in my life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love Frenchie. Powerful man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's really He's pulling the, the one strings. I'm talking about that's smarter than the all of us. We've seen all. that so Channel 9 hat. Smarter than okay. us. Ben French. Uh, Imagine the, if he was just that, that dude with those globes. Puppeteers. <laughs> he's puppeteers. The Murdoch puppet oh, master. He's got, he's got a direct it's line to Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> he's just calling he's up. He's got his shirt off with that straw on it. It's all just a distraction. It's all just a distraction. He's got Craig Kelly on the phone yeah. every night. So what are you going to do now? Yeah. Uh, um. Yes. Yeah, so, so what they were trying to do, obviously, and I, I didn't realise this until I started looking into the Australian, because this is the point that I'm always saying in my stand-up show, like, right? If you want to know what the news is going to talk about tomorrow, you read the Australian today, because that is Murdoch's brain. That is where all of his key journalists and generals, I suppose, his, like, prime editors are there, and they're the ones that are shaping the narrative with what you see in Channel 9 and the radio and whatever else, right? And what the article in there was saying was, oh, You've passed all of these laws. Nicole Flint thinks that uh, you are calling her a whiny bitch is menacing. 
that's reason enough for you to shut it down. You should start using your laws for this. So what they're trying to do is get as many people as possible to come out and be like, this is menacing, this is harassment, all this kind of stuff. So they have an excuse and then they can go to the judge and say, menacing, and then yeah. get rid of it, you know? That's what's happening there. So when you're always looking at these identity wars that are happening here, right? Just always imagine that there is somebody whose entire job is a spin doctor who is thinking, how do we utilize this subsect of society, whatever it is, white men, lesbians, whatever, how do we use them to get our agenda through? Mm. That's really what's happening there. So when it comes to the question of the Labor Party, what I know from talking to these people is, okay, yeah, they're into identity politics, but here's their identity politics in general, class. The people that you're usually talking about, the people that are usually into the you know, the transsexuals, whatever, blah, 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 blah. That's usually the Greens party. Now, what does the Murdoch press always try to do? They try and make those two parties the same, despite the fact that probably the Labor Party and the Greens hate each other more than the Liberal Party and the Greens, for instance, right? But that's where all of those people lie. The reason they lie in that party is because Liberal voters' kids move into the inner city they're the ones that vote for the Greens. If you look at it, the Greens are the richest voting bloc in the country. You look at who win, who votes for Labor, what is it? It's always Western suburbs. It's Newcastle. It's working class families. They understand that they're out there to look out for them. Now, obviously, they move into the whole identity politics stuff, but you have to understand that they're also looking at this game from another layer that you are as well, which is that they get shut out of the press unless they serve the narrative of the Murdoch press. They still need to have their name in the Murdoch press so that they attach themselves mm. to things that they know are going to get them following or, or like some kind of traction in the press. It's a much mm. more complicated game than, you know, they, they just, I don't know, they, they want the first you know, lesbian attorney general or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> which I do. Um, <laughs> which Don't fun. we all? And I think that's where it, where the problem of, of, of labelling uh, right and left lives. Because as soon as you start doing that, then if you're, a li- if you're a lefty, if you care about people, then you have to vote this way. If you're a righty, then you're evil and you do this. The labels are so mixed now. Yeah. Because so many people are would classify themselves as left wing, but would say something that maybe doesn't run along the ideology of someone who is properly left-wing and then they can't think of themselves as left-wing anymore. They go, well, I must not be. I must be a far-right person, but I don't feel like that. I don't think I'm racist, but I think this, so I must be racist. Which is another invention of the press, which is why it does their head in and they find it so difficult to box me in because I'm basically sitting there just being like, Jonah from Tonga is fucking funny. I'm glad that he dressed up in blackface, but I also want public hospitals. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> Man, that's just so. Con- it, it, it truly is like condemning of all the readers of the Murdoch Press who have just conveniently forgotten what the Murdoch Press has been talking about for years, yeah. which is, oh, there's too much political correctness. Everyone's woke. Yeah. Everyone's offended at everything. And on a dime. They, they don't call out the hypocrisy. It was Isn't really it interesting to see that. It, it, you that. see their audience do it as well. You look yep. in their comments and they're just like, yes, he is very sexist, isn't he? What? Immediately. You're a subscriber to yeah. the Telegraph. What is going on? What happened? <laughs> yeah. Bizarre. That, that whole Nicole Flint thing, and if you don't know who Nicole Flint is, she's an MP in Who Cares, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, who cares? One Nicole, fuck minions. off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the mini puppets on his fingers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just they're just all in French's Big basement. French. It's like the stone cutters. <laughs> Big, Big Daddy French just calling the shots. The fact that you called her a whiny oh, little bitch and that got whiny was that the was that the term whiny little bitch? Yeah, yeah. That got a run in the entire week of news. Like it was everywhere that you said a slight phrase that if you can't handle being called a whiny little bitch and you are in any form of government, you are a fucking mm. soft. Also, <laughs> like so it probably, probably helped if she wasn't being such a whiny little bitch as well. She oh, got, and didn't it? Got called proving it. the point didn't over it. and over. See how I called you that, and now you're whining about it, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and if you see the video, he said, "I've called other people whiny little bitches as well." 
Mm. His, his Nicole, but mm. then Clive Palmer. Yeah. Two seconds and afterwards. Was what, three men after that. Yeah. There was this great yeah. video that actually detailed that and played mm. the rest of it. It was my video. Mm. And <laughs> 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 but you go, <laughs> Nicole's a whiny awesome. little bitch. And then they stopped there. And then two seconds afterwards, as you said, Neil, so is Clive, so is so and so. And they just go, no, nah, he just said that about a woman because it proves their point that you're a bad person and no one should ever listen to. Geordies. I'll tell you what, it gets more insane than that because her response to that, because I kept hitting her on that point, that that's exactly what I said in the same sentence and you took that out. Her response to that was, you can't call a woman that because that is, quote, undebatably sexist. I am from the party of free speech, but that is sexism and I condemn it. Now, talk about making your head explode. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is incredible, isn't it? Like, mm. the, it, it is amazing that in the same sentence, the reason that she has this as well is because she's from the Menzies Institute, which is this kind of uh, church of Scientology for the Liberal Party. <laughs> Jesus. They move in there, they get extremely indoctrinated in this kind of, and you know when it gets to that cult-like level where it's just like, we believe in free speech, we believe in free speech, go out and say this is sexism. Yeah, it's sexism, but I also believe in free speech. And they say it and they don't understand the inherent contradictions in what they're saying because they're that in the cult. Mm. That's why she's in her position now. It's because she was there, she used her position actually to get... They get a certain allowance to spend on their electorate. She spent a large chunk of that money buying books for the Menzies Institute. So it's just a way of funneling money back in there, you know? But it really freaks me out that if you really, like, these are the people that are making decisions for the country, right? They're Manchurian candidates. Mm. It is really just like being run by Tom Cruise. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, Frenchie in this case. But yeah. <laughs> you, you have your little minions and they run through and then you control them. It's, mm. it's, it's and sick, but it's what happens all over the world with politics. And they would be unaware that they're being controlled. That's probably the scariest thing. Huh? What do you mean? But they, they wouldn't be aware. Well, that they wouldn't see it as control. Exactly. They see it as this is, this is my is. path. It's a religion. Exactly. I've thought about this. I've come to this conclusion Myself. on my own. Yeah. Because you yeah, can't control yeah. people if you tell them what to think. You have to make them think that it was their own thought. Yeah, and that's mm. the most effective form of whatever you want to call it, propaganda, influence, whatever it may be. You, you incept the idea into their head. If you directly tell someone something, they immediately back off. No, I don't want to be told what to think. But, you know, you, you know you've opened my eyes a lot because, like, what we were just saying before, how uh, Labor is getting a bad rap in the Murdoch press, well... Then they'll suddenly come out and say, well, there's just no energy and enthusiasm around uh, Anthony Albanese. And it's like, well, that's because of you guys. Yes. 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 That's it's exactly how it works. It's incredible. They create the narrative and then the narrative becomes reality. The lisp doesn't help. That's how Joe Rogan <laughs> prayer candle, by the way. It's usually lit for every um, Saint, Rogue. Saint Rogues. I think, I think the sort of the I thing that, that I take out of this, and I, like, I know a lot of my mates, like, again, Building, so like, I generally remain sort of relatively ignorant to politics, and it's because, mm. like, literally, probably without snapping your dick off too much, like, <laughs> no, but like the, the most attention, no, the most attention I pay to it is like Geordie's mm, videos would. and stuff because I think deep down a lot of people know how crooked the whole thing. Like, if you if you become as sort of involved in it and like educate yourself, you and you guys get a good look at like how fucking rotten the whole the whole thing is and how kind of futile. A lot of it is. It's just, yep. it's just backhanders and, and yeah. chunkiness. And I think a lot of people, I don't know, I'm probably speaking for myself, but I think a lot of people just go like, fuck that. Yeah. Like it's, it's well, I don't you, know. Like, you would have seen at Christmas exhausting. this year a whole new group of young people having arguments with their family members, particularly older family members, about things like the koala habitats and things you've spoken about. You know, really? Um, how, I, I, I generally think so. And you would have had the argument of this is the facts, things that you've stated in your videos and backed up with evidence. And there's, you know, little little Jacob saying that he's 22 or whatever, and he's saying it to his dad or his uncle and or his, his auntie, and they're just saying, no, that can't be right. That doesn't seem right. Mm. But they're the, they're the future of uh, not only political leaning but critical thinking as well. Mm. Mm. There is still a enormous amount of people who believe that their side of politics is infallible and that they can't, they're not bad people. They're there to look after us and they tell us what they, you know, 
they do this, they, they look after us. Like, and it's just not true. The vast majority of politicians are there to serve themselves, particularly on the liberal side of things. Nice pension. Man, they get <laughs> <Very> same <laughs> pension. You know what? Great pension when they finish. I had, I I had this as an up. idea. I had well, this as an idea, years and then you're set for life. <laughs> it's like seventy five percent of your age till you fucking. I think. I I think that the prime minister of Australia and the highest politicians should be paid a shit ton more than they do. The more money they have, the more money they have in their pocket, the less they're accepting from other businesses, from other places. Like the same with the. The president of the United States. What is that? Like six hundred thousand dollars a year or something? Four hundred k? I think it's like, four hundred. Yeah, it's fuck all for yeah. what they're doing. But then they just get like a book deal and like unbelievable speaking jobs after. It, like. But this is my thing. Where's that money coming from? If you're getting paid a million dollars for a speaking event, unless everyone in that audience, if there's three hundred people there, are paying a shit ton of money, doing them while they're in office though. They wouldn't. No, I'm talking afterwards because they're all doing favors. Yeah. So they should be paid. $10 million a year, and then maybe you might get someone who doesn't go, well, I would like that fucking Ferrari in 10 years' time. You can never have enough money. It wouldn't make, it wouldn't make a difference. I know, but, yeah. but but underpaying them to the point where they're making 400K. You're underpaid, bro. 400K is not underpaid. 100% Maybe to you, you no, fucking. No, no, it's 10,000 a day. Filthy, yeah. this is, this this is, is, have you seen, my, have you seen my gold play button <laughs> in this fucking house? <laughs> underpaying, 400 grand is not underpaid. 400 <laughs> grand a year, okay, at a, at a, at a 49, percent tax, a 49 cent tax rate is what, $200,000 a year to do the worst. What would you pay? What would you pay? Then. Ten million dollars a year. All of them. Tax Ten million. Money. Sorry. What, who, President. Who are you paying? President, President of the United the States. Of right. Ten right. million. <laughs> Scott Morrison needs ten million dollars now <laughs> <laughs> to stop them getting brown paper bags under the table. It's not. Gonna, it would never stop. It, it does help. Bigger bag. It, if, uh, there is no way. If look at all the presidents that have gone into office, they're all mm. happy and and smiling. Maybe not Joe. He's. he's Dead. On. He's very dead. He's it's, dead. It's weekend he's at Bernie's. He's hanging on. But everyone else, except for Trump, he came out younger, which was weird. He looks great. <laughs> he looks good now. Yeah, he, looks awesome. weird. <laughs> he looks fucking all good. Obama <laughs> went in young, sprightly, yeah, you know, and then came awesome. out <laughs> like a very old, because it's the hardest job in the world. Everyone either hates you, loves you, nothing you do is right. It's, it's like, like being a YouTuber. It's like, it's like <laughs> you. Yeah. I really think if you paid them more, they would get less under the table. So we've got this on, this is on record. Isaac Butterfield mm. wants politicians paid more. This yeah. is real man of the people. Nicole Flint, <laughs> if she makes a million bucks a year, does she care about the Menzies Institute? Or is she going to do things that will really change the world? Man, it's such a hard question. I'm not sure, but I do know that this whole idea of you should pay politicians less is definitely a bad way to go because then you get third world countries. Yeah. You know, and that is just like. And they really start taking backhanders, don't they? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, but like, they do. Yeah. Because it's a prick of a job. Yeah. Because everyone hates you. Like, you, like, genuinely, people despise you if you're a politician. Fuck yeah. And for a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> They're all. <laughs> but I, I think that the, the real power players, the ones that really matter, the booze news, it's not even, it, it, maybe it's not money, maybe it's power, like you said before. But if you are a politician, how many ex-liberal uh, politicians are in high-paid jobs right now? Oh, yeah, it's a revolving door. They yeah, go straight into go lobby straight groups. Into, yeah. well, why do they do they get that? Because they're a politician or because they did things that maybe gave them some good references on their resume, yeah. perhaps? Yeah. yeah. So if they have more money, maybe they don't do that. Or maybe they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just <laughs> knows. That's the question. It is. Yeah. Maybe we should trial. We're already doubled our national debt. Let's get it. Some more. Put it on black, ladies and gentlemen. Million. Yeah. It'd be a hard sell. Now, yeah, yeah. ten million. Fucking I thought it would. Ten million. Ten million's not. It's fuck all. A year. It's ten million's <laughs> fuck all. Are you hearing this? Ten shit? million. <laughs> <laughs> they ask. Everyone's asking for free rapid tests, right? Oh, it's, ten million wouldn't get you. rapid tests. Rapid tests. Every okay. Here's the thing. The problem with rapid tests and giving out free rapid tests. Is because everyone's freaking out in the country right now. Mm. Everyone's doing four rapid tests a day. If you've got to pay for four rapid tests for 26 million people, you're going to quadruple the national debt mm. in a couple of weeks. Calm everyone down, then give some free ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just had COVID. I did. Mm. How was yeah, And how was that? <laughs> Welcome back to the show. How was COVID? It was easy. <laughs> Coco. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Had the cocoa. <laughs> I'm in love. Had, with the 
<laughs> how did you get it? Uh, the Rona. Who did you get it? On? I'm pretty sure I got it from a comedian. That uh, do you guys know French, when I do the Frenchy. when I yeah, mm. probably Frenchie's <laughs> secretly <laughs> putting it out. He's the real Bill Gates. Yeah. He's yeah. putting it out yeah. there. Wuhan, Frenchie's in Wuhan. You like get AIDS from him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my friend Max got it a day before me, and I'd been hanging out with him three or four days prior, so I assume I got it from him. Okay. Yeah. And we fucked for hours, so that's probably what we were. <laughs> nice. But, uh, Finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> COVID and AIDS. Oh, I didn't know yeah. I could do that. Too. Yeah, yeah. can you actually wow. transmit it that way? I don't know. Surely, like, wasn't there a story that they were doing or... anal testing in, some, in like a Chinese airport? Like that was swabbed. like a thing. Yeah, like you got a I think early on there, that was the swab. How good that be? Swab. Like the fucking the, the testing sites just popping it, pop, <laughs> popping your moon out <laughs> as you drive past. <laughs> twist it ten times, twist it again. <laughs> swab four times. Now today. that guy should be paid ten million dollars a year. <laughs> that's that's, that's worth it. Nice job. Uh, nice no, job. Big Did your lungs hurt? No. Well, what happened? I just kind of had a cold for two days. That was it. You're an anti Are you sure it wasn't yeah. a cold? No, I, the result came back positive. Oh, man. Yeah, I waited in line for four hours. Oh. And um, I got my result in two days. A lot of people still haven't got their result and got tested sometimes 10 days ago. <laughs> Don't but they say Because everyone's just given up, haven't they? So was it just like, congratulations, you got the Rona. Pretty and much, yeah. All right, yeah. And and then, then, are you vaccinated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was vaccinated. Yeah. So I don't know. It was... Must have worked. Yeah. I don't know. It was pretty You're anti vax, aren't you? Mild. <laughs> Staunch. <laughs> no, I'm not both. I'm not sure. both yeah. So strength in numbers. Are you gonna get a booster shot? I don't think so. I am hoping to catch it before. I knew you were anti vax. I I, I I jumped through enough hoops. I fucking I don't think it, do you have to get a booster? Well, I think they're gonna make you get boosters. No. You, what if you, you catch it? Is it yeah. necessary if you Well, you've it? just said before that it's six to eight weeks that you have like, the antibodies, which I think they is keep changing it. That's garbage. From what I heard, for the longest time, it's six months yeah. minimum. You're like herpes; it's, it should just be with you forever. Like once you get it, like it well, should just stick around. On um on a particular <laughs> podcast, I'm not going to name any names because it'll be fucking. We'll be getting sued. Everything will be appalling. Um, there was a particular doctor who said that you can't catch oh, it twice. Yeah. yeah, I've heard so many conflicting reports about that. Uh, some people say you can. Some people say you can't. I think you can get a different variant. Perhaps. So I think I must have had you the have Omicron, Omicron one. What? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. It was pretty mild. Are we going to get corona now? No, I've been... I've been, I, I've been I got it. Like seven hours. I did my seven days. Off. I've had my, my... I've been holding yep. my breath this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this counts as ISO, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's four oh, hours. Fuck. <laughs> if you're here for more than four hours, yeah. that's when it gets yeah. it. <laughs> Open a window, we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Hands on. <laughs> well, I... I did my seven days. I'm good. All right. What are the um? What are the the issues people have with ScoMo's handling of, of this of this portion of the pandemic? Are there, are there any that you think are plausible? Well, it's just like yeah, what let it rip's great if you're not a health professional. Yeah. You know, like I suppose he uh, <coughs> got Christmas sales up again. Maya had their Boxing Day sales. That was great. I also but had if Boxing you're a Day nurse, base sale. I did good too. Your merch sale? Yeah, it went really good. <laughs> well, it was just it's 50 <laughs> mums waiting at that garage door. <laughs> <laughs> My son loves me, Dick Stinks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not getting one of my new hats that says fucking Australia, mate. Oh, no. <laughs> They're really good. Only 1995 too. 1995? Are you kidding? They're like 35 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I bought them in China for fuck all. Ah, oh. oh, capitalism. I love it. Um, proud capitalist. <sighs> well, thank you for spreading corona. <laughs> thank you. So what do you do? If you were the prime minister, what would you do, Jordan? Uh, in this portion? Because I don't think you're locked down anymore. I think you do let it rip. Yeah, but the, I agree. The, the problem is you can let it rip, but you will cause a lot of deaths in other areas because you've just completely gridlocked all the beds in the country, especially when you cut $50 billion from health nine years ago, which would have come in very handy having a few extra sure. hospitals, beds and Definitely. nurses at this point. That was, that was outrageous. a system to begin with. When you're 18 months into a pandemic and people go, we don't have enough hospital beds. It's like, mate. What? Yeah. <laughs> You've had time. A year and a half? <laughs> we didn't see this coming. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> what the fuck have you been doing? Uh, <laughs> so the reason I think you, you let it rip 
is because at this point we have a, a variant that is between five and 30 times less deadly. It's still causing people to be hospitalized, yes. In Manly last week, there was a hospital that 50% of the people who were admitted, well, sorry, 50% of the people who were given as a number of hospital admissions with COVID were there for other reasons and tested positive when they were there by the hospital. So that then brings a the question up, well, how many people in ICU were there for other reasons, not just the Rona? Mm. And then that goes to the question of, well, has this been happening the entire time? Does this happen in other hospitals? Mm. So it will cause other people to die, which is horrendous. But what do you do to everyone else that doesn't kill? Like, I'm not wording this very well because that was a fucking terrible way to put it. What, so in 2020, the third leading, cause of, the leading cause of death was cancer. 50,000 people died in Australia in mm. 2020. Mm. COVID was the 38th. Now, that goes up in 2021 because we're still locked down, but it goes up. 2022, we're open up, but it drops. The death rate is lower with this variant. Mm. There is no doubt. Mm. So do you keep having people isolated? You can't have everyone isolated because there's hospital staff that need to go to work. So then everyone goes, okay, the hospital staff can go to work, but everyone else needs to stay isolated. What do you do? Canada's just gone back into lockdown. America's a free-for-all. New Zealand, I don't know if they have any cases. Jacinta's just, everyone's in their room. Locked off, locked <laughs> off. Fucking stay in your room until the super rugby starts. Uh, but, <laughs> but there is no there is no outcome that benefits everyone. Either we stay in our homes again for another year and then we go out and people continue to die or we do it now and people continue to die. Where is, and we don't know whether it's gonna, where it's going to go. We don't know. But with this particular variant, it seems like it's less deadly. Oh, yeah. it's definitely less deadly. It's just the whole point of that all those beds taken up means that there's other people that are going right. to die of other things that sure. are going to die. That's where the strain comes. Um, really, when I think about it, it's also just the fact that there's like a big economic impact of having so many people sick at once. So mm. when they're always saying that like this is terrible for the economy locking things down, all the evidence shows that the longer you are locked down, the better it is for your economy. Like look at West Australia, for instance, best economy in the world because God Emperor McGowan was just like, nah, out you go. Oh, you want to come in with a cruise ship that's um, plagued. Well, I've got a different approach to Gladys Berejiklian. Yeah. I'm not going to let that in. Torpedoed it. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Yeah. But do you, think that it's the, do you think history. that's the best way to go about it, to lock places down for an undetermined Don't you I'll think tell you what, if look, there's cost and benefits on both sides, in, right? Yeah. Huh? There's cost and benefits on, on both sides of the argument. And I feel like people are just saying whatever side they're on, vax, anti-vax, lockdown, you know, anti-lockdown, people just look at the benefits of whatever their argument is yeah, yeah. and they're not looking at, like, the costs. With anything, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. There are things done right and wrong, like McGowan shuts it down, works. But what about people's five fi out workers that could people's come home for well being? What about the corner store? What that relies on Small tourism businesses. trade? What about yeah, yeah, but, but this stat, boys? This stat, best economy on earth. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, but <laughs> it's, it's hard to argue with that. It's okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. I don't think it gets better than that. No, it's right? the best. <laughs> it's the best. It's like by yeah. definition. So, yeah. what, so do you roll that out in the entire country? Well, that was the whole thing. You had the opportunity because we were an island. You could have done the same thing and we would have been sweet this entire time. Instead, we're a trillion dollars in debt. We've got nothing to show for it, unlike in the Labor government where we had a bunch of schools and renewable energy farms. Instead, what we've got here is a trillion dollars of debt all of that went to foreign multinational companies because that's what it was all designed to do. It was designed to just flood money to cheap banks, which obviously just, you know, the reason that housing, for instance, in the last year went up by some ridiculous amount, something like 25%. I remember at the beginning of this lockdown when I was looking at houses and I was like, fuck, 1.5 million for a house in Sydney. I would be dancing in the streets for a one point five yeah. million dollar Newcastle's house in gone Australia, absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Like the yeah. last six yeah. months in Newcastle, the just house, gone the house exploded. we bought, it was three months later. Similar houses being built in the exact same area, hundred thousand dollars more. Like for from the company that we bought it through, from a turnkey sort of thing, where they're like, okay, this is the price, you pay it, you don't get to choose anything. They just give you the house sort of thing at the end of the day. The exact same house. Like they, they tweak the design every sort of release. Like it's just a little bit different, so it doesn't look the exact same when you go around the block, right? Hundred thousand dollars more, based on nothing. 
Based on nothing. Just based because, on nothing. Yeah. But I don't basically because there was just a bunch of cheap money afforded to the banks from the government because it was all just a ruse. It was yeah. a complete con to get this exact thing to happen. But I don't think we, you can lock you can't lock a country down. Yeah, why not? Point, wouldn't you think that eventually Corona, even if we took all measures possible to lock everything down, prevent all flights, all cruise ships, everything, surely eventually it would get in. One. You only need one. Well, yeah, you, you only, only need, need one. one. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get one. That's what that was. And it a, would spread. That was what I thought about WA. Like they've had this such harsh, like what's the, do they plan on never having COVID? But how long like, can you, you do that? One. How like, long can you do that for? I don't know. Can, you, can that be the world's best economy for 10 years? I think so because the rest of the world <laughs> is what, in a plague. What yeah, happens you know? to those? But is it a plague? Well, it is, yeah. I mean, obviously, right? Well, a pandemic. Yeah, I mean, it's a pandemic. Let's just be unvaccinated. Let's use <laughs> with, with our extensive <laughs> me- medical knowledge of yes. no one here having a degree in it. <laughs> much, much, like, much like Brad Hazard <laughs> not having a degree in it. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, he has an arts a, degree? He has a Bachelor of Arts. I have a BA. So that is sweet. You know what? I put, oh, right. <laughs> you're health minister right here. It's <laughs> insane. And you don't I said like that. politics. Frenchy's health minister. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Frenchy government. I said that on Instagram. I said it's ridiculous that he has a bachelor of arts and he's the health minister. And people are like, that happens all the time in politics. I said, yes, that's my point. Probably shouldn't. It shouldn't. <laughs> it definitely shouldn't. shouldn't. Yeah. Lordy, can you get the whiskey out? I'm off I'm off the sauce. None for me. I'm, I'm drying out. Why are yeah, you drying go. out? Christmas was too cheery. Fuck me. Uh, just the Huge. one that's nearly empty. Huge Christmas. Yeah, just Christmas. have a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what a great friend you are, Isaac. <laughs> Straight away. And he gets right, a little whiskey. Just a little whiskey. <laughs> this just is what. Do you want some? That's yeah, a yeah, tiny yeah, little yeah. whiskey. Um, we're going to need another bottle. There's another bottle down the second shelf there. Thanks, Sorry. Um, what are we, what are we? What's this? This is what Lordy brings us. Uh, oh. no, hang on. There's a, one that's already open. Yeah, drink it all, you big pig. Oh, I put it all in that little gun thing. Did you see the gun? Ah, the whiskey gun. Lordy, can you throw me the gun? Sorry. <laughs> Skull up, Hobbs. I left Neil for last because he's got some water to drink. This is a um, Tasmanian whiskey out of a, a barrel. See, there, this is the gun that Claire got me for Christmas. Bang, bang. Can you, can you show the camera there, Lou? You can pick it up. I'll oh, tell you shit. what, though. In general, in general, though, I think that this whole debate of being like, oh, Jeez. oh lockdown was very hard Jeez, Jen, on Jeez. my mental health. Jeez. And I lost my job, but I got more money from the government than I ever had in my job. Life is very tough in 2020. I was reading about the Black Death, right? It's like a one in two kill rate. Yeah. Uh, you bled from your eyes if you were lucky. That was a good way of dying from the bubonic yeah. plague. Stop and opening that. La- sorry, sorry. Jesus Christ. Can you, can you do it for me, please? No, Thank no, you. you're not having any of that. It's so hard to fill up. It's just a show piece. It's just it's for decoration. This is unbelievable. So I get this much. There's another bottle here. Okay, thank you. Well, but it's a different whiskey, so please drink that. All right. There's rules to this show, you fucking lunatic. This is insane. Yeah, it would be scary if it was you a- get a house. My rules. Yeah. <laughs> You're in <laughs> Now, now that we've sorted out who gets to not play with the whiskey gun. I touch the gun. Back to COVID. <laughs> You can't be like... Well, bottoms up, boys. Mm. Yeah, we already did this, but yes. Yeah. Cheers again. <laughs> What would you do for everyone who was uh, <laughs> impacted economically by the pandemic? So businesses that had to close down. I am well, I'll tell you the first thing I wouldn't do. I wouldn't be giving it to the business owners to portion out who gets JobKeeper and who doesn't. Mm. You do exactly what Shout Kevin Rudd Jerry did. There's a reason that the rest of the world looked at Kevin Rudd's response as an economic stimulus, copied it, got similar results. We did the ex- not the exact opposite, but we did a crap version of it again because they were trying to... They saw this as a golden opportunity to stoke up business. Mm. Much more expensive. Uh, like, I mean, for fuck's sake, think about this. The treasurer of the country didn't know how much it was cost it was going to cost. He overestimated by $60 billion. Now, does that really sound like they have a good grasp on what's going on? He's got a Bachelor of Arts as well. It's those fucking arts degrees, man. They just turned out money. Yeah, yeah I, I think... That with this with this new variant, and we need to remember that not everyone has. We, we spoke about this before. One of your mates been quite crook at the moment with yeah. the, with the Rona. Pretty healthy dude too. Like not normal. not everyone has um, omicrons. Some people still Omicrons. have Crohn's. Yeah, you know, I say like that's terrible. Like Crohn's, real bad Crohn's. Like you start sneezing bad. out your asshole. Oh. Some people still have the delts. Yeah, right. 
So mm. some people may still be sick because I, I I saw this lady on the news. She goes, "I have got the Omicron. I can feel it." It's like you. It takes weeks of genetic testing to work that out. You <laughs> fucking idiot. Apparently not. Like, <laughs> she goes, "I can feel it." Um, people still are getting that, and people are still dying from that. You know, but. I don't think it's worth locking down anymore because at this point you need to allow people to do things. Well, Neil and like, I were talking before the podcast about like but, like anyone who owns a bar or a cafe and like they just got through like leading into the Christmas period where they're going, you beauty, like we're back. Like we're going to finally make some money. And then there's another outbreak. And then the the way that the um, the rules are at the moment is if you have a close contact in your business, like you just have to shut down. Yeah. So they're fucked. Yeah. Like they're, anyone, I've got a few mates that own bars and stuff and they were like, going, we're finally going to make some money all of a sudden they get a close contact. So that's Christmas fucked. Like they just have to close for Christmas. Mm. It's like, what, mm. like, what are they? So now the onus is on business owners. Now the onus has been put on the business owners to shut. They're not being forced to lock down, but they have to, like it's, yeah, it's not set up for fucking success. Like, no, it's not. Yeah. And it's like me from a completely um, like self-preserving way thinking about myself. I haven't done it. St- <laughs> is there any other way? Cheers, idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a hat. <laughs> Daddy needs some more nachos. <laughs> 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 I'm so happy that I'm not sitting next to that because there will be a photo of you on the Australian tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Right next to a Nazi fucking helmet. Jordan Shanks, lefty or is he? (laughs) Um, I haven't done a proper tour in two years. Like, like in, 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 this is a, this is a real number, right? In, um, the amount of shows that I have booked in, um, Deposits I have on venues. There's sixty thousand dollars of my money in deposits right now that are just sitting there that I can't access. Of fucking deposits. And then there's all this cash that I spent on promoting tours that never happened and all that type of stuff. So there is real world losses from my point of view. And there could have been a million bucks on the table that I've lost in ticket revenue. Like that's fucking that's I know that is a very, you know, shitty thing to hear if you're fucking working at Woolies, but for me, I don't know how long this career is going to last. It could be 10 minutes or 10 days or, 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 or 10 years. And that's not just your money. That's the, you know, everyone who works at the venue, Venues. everyone associated with you. I didn't think about them, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> it's surprising. Well, but, still doesn't care. You know. Why a hat? <laughs> There's no, also the, the proceeds Eskies. go um, to them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about that. Or buy a Don't Miss Mate, the new product that I, that I have as well. It lights up your toilet so you don't miss in the dark. It's very good. They're good. I'll oh, give you one. Oh, you gave me one. They're good. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> yeah. It was great. You They're great. made this. Yeah, it's mine. Oh, what is it? Man's Entrepreneur. Best, man's best friend. Don't miss, mate. Oh, right. Isaac, can I, what happened with this uh, this doll? Are you- There's some legal action, being I believe. Sued? What's going on? <laughs> can we talk about it? Yeah. Um, buy a hat. <laughs> so, no. Can't talk about it. I don't know. It. Probably. Um, they look like a bobblehead. The, another company thought we went too close to them. And I basically said to whoever made them, I said, do you think it's a bit close? I went, nah, we'll be right. Turns out we weren't right. <laughs> Good old Aussie attitude yeah. of we'll be right. I mean, so we, we stopped selling them. So, yeah, you win, guys. Well done. <laughs> How um, many have you got left to like? Nah, none. Sold they, them. They'll sell them all. <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, if you did make those, sorry, guys. Uh, if you, that's your company, didn't mean to. I love you. Goodbye. Um, but yeah, that was annoying. But no, merch is cool. If, if this pandemic didn't, ha- didn't happen, I wouldn't have started doing merch. This is why you need to do a Labor Shield T-shirt. Yeah, I do. You're well, just right. Just do it, please. I will. I will. I will. I, I like. <laughs> no, you're right. It's it's actually a great idea. I think about it all the time, and then I don't act on it. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I think that that would go down a treat. You're I so can- right. It's just the the midget from Game of Thrones attitude for life, isn't it? Why don't I get point out? You're a midget. I'll get. I'll get. The guys that do <laughs> my merch. Hey, Penny Dinklage, remember me? <laughs> the guys that do my merch. Cool. I'll I'll get them to do a shirt for you if you want. That they're no, really no. good at what they do, and they'll sort it all out. And because be it needs to be out there, and it's hilarious. Great profit margin. It is like even the whiny little bitch it's a great shirt. Idea. You know, the, you know the Mr. Happy, the Mr. Happy, happy and Mr. Cranky and stuff? Miss, Miss Why don't you do Mrs. Whiny, whiny Little, little bitch. bitch? Oh, my God. 
Get that mate. Just have a close enough. Whiny bitch. Stop thinking like a fucking lefty and try and think like a capitalist. <laughs> You need, to, you need to think like me, boy. Get your whiskey look gun out. Look at this. See this? You could have this. <laughs> Just look around. Chase. All of this could be yours. <laughs> look at this. You want it? You pay your employees too much, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. For starters. Come on. Yeah, do you pay holiday, right? You fucking idiot. You gave them Christmas off. Ha! Idiot. Hey, Lord. Why is this the hey, shark tank all of a sudden? Hey, produ- <laughs> hey producer Lordy, when was the last time I paid your super? Never! <laughs> you won't find out for a few years, but he's not getting super. <laughs> I love that. I love the shameless, the shameless capitalist compared to the other ones in America that like oh, will take fifty million dollars in donations and be like, no, I'm a good person. Like we have this like trans flag here. It's like no, just admit it. Like you love the money. Yeah, yeah, I know. Fucking- I'm not in this for money. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you in it for? Why would you the do hate? it? If yes. I wasn't in it, I'd be like much more threats. trustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my bag. Yeah. Get off on death threats. <laughs> So much more respectable. Yeah. No, I love that. Of course it is. Kevin Hart's been good at that. He's like, fucking up. Like, of course just like, you do it for money. He's like, yeah, I fucking, and I'm looking to make a lot more. <laughs> like, of course. It's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Like people, and that's this is the thing, because people, I think people believe that Friendly Geordies, Neil Cole Hacker, Joshie Nielsen are genuinely good people. But I think deep down people know that I can be a, see, this is the thing. I have the image of being the horrible, mean person. But in the real world, this is what a guy told me, um, who's like a well-known comedian, he said, more people shouldn't meet you. You're actually a nice oh, yeah, person. That's true. You are the opposite, the direct opposite to how they represent you. But how he represents him. But to <laughs> yes, that's him. that too. <laughs> but if I play the role as the arsehole, as the heel. The heel. Comedy's heel. Comedy's heel. Conor McGregor of YouTube. I am the Conor McGregor. I punch old people in bars, right? <laughs> I like I think that's the better way to be. Because if you try and be the nice guy your whole life, gay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Just ask that guy. (laughs) What would your version of proud Labor Shield be? I have never been able to sell my merch effectively. You know, all my fans are ethnic. They're cheap. Are they tight? Are they tight? They're cheap. Yeah, Yeah, they're tight. They don't buy anything. That's funny. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Buy this or you're racist. They won't buy anything. It's that's true. That's funny. I, Which kind of makes I'm like, oh, that's smart. I would have. I would do that. Yeah. But yeah. fuck. So well, someone's selling <laughs> your face in Paddy's markets, and that's where they're getting their merch. Cuda. Yeah. <laughs> yep, for Cuda. five bucks. <laughs> Next to the fake goose face. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan, you made fun of my catchphrase, the <laughs> the dick stinks thing. Yeah. Do you know why I started saying dick stinks? Uh, God, I feel like I'm just being put on the spot of where I do matter. my homework. It doesn't like. matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The reason yeah. I started saying it is because I used to say be a good motherfucker and people used to yell it out at me. So I thought, what's the most ridiculous thing I could say to make people yell out at me in public and it would be quite funny, a bit of an in-joke. So I started saying me dick stinks because Claire and I used to say to each other just randomly in the house, like, oh, me dick stinks, yada, yada, yada. Very, very funny. So people started <laughs> saying it to me in public, just yelling out, me dick stinks. And like all the people would turn around, like, what the fuck is wrong with that person? <laughs> and people assume that, oh, it's just kids that watch that Butterfield, right? Me dick stinks. That's so childish. But I was in England. I was in London. I was in the Tower of London. Beautiful part of the world. Amazing history. People... The incredible history, a thousand years. And I walked up to where they have the crown jewels, the big line. Didn't go in. I don't know why. I'm just lazy. Tight. Didn't want to pay. Tight. Didn't want to pay. I was like, that's my three pound. There was a guard there, uh, a Queen's guard. It's got particular, this particular one, they have different Queen's guard. It's a Scots guard. Big hat, the whole thing in a grey uniform. He's walking back and forth with an M16 with a big um, fucking, what's it called? Bayonet. Bayonet on the end, walking back and forth. And I walk up near and I'm just sort of watching him. Like I'm like from you, or maybe maybe from me to the wall away, you know, five metres or so. And he just sort of whispers at me. He's like, mm-hmm. I was like, what? And he walks past again. Mm-hmm. I was like, I can't hear you. He goes, me dick stinks. No, I he s- didn't. I swear to God. I swear on Claire's life, he says this to me, a Scots guard. <laughs> this is like their big thing is never they talk. talk. Yeah. Never talk. Yeah. Never talk. I, I took a photo it. of it too. a thousand years of tradition. To say, to say me dick stinks. stinks. The Queen's guard. 
It was, it was the way it had to end. It was well. the best. He's willing to go out on that. Like, that was his thing. Yeah. And I was like, no way. That's ridiculous. You are <laughs> kidding. And he said it to me and I was just like, this is incredible. And we got a selfie in the whole thing. He ended up coming to my show that night. No way. And we With the queen. And with the queen. <laughs> <laughs> with the crown jewel. Yeah. Yeah. And the queen loves his stuff. Man, it was, it was just crazy. <laughs> the queen <laughs> comes out with the mid extincts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little fucking Australia. Had him. <laughs> 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 but yeah, man, it, it absolutely, and I've got a photo with him. I'll show you. I won't show anyone else. I, I won't show the camera, obviously. I don't want him to get fucking, I don't know. A weekend with Prince Andrew or something, but You'd be watching this right now. Way, <laughs> way too old. <laughs> <laughs> Not his cup of tea. But no. man, I just I <laughs> couldn't Andrew. believe that What's this. He doing at the moment? Did he, did Prince he just Andrew. Get away? Not much. Did he, like, did he get rehab? I don't know. Is he, yeah. did he go to cool. rehab for pedophilia. What do they do there? That's uh-huh. that's me and him there. Wow, that's the guy. Wow, it was crazy. It was like, and that's, that's a deathbed moment. That's him. It's like you, you press the photo and it plays. That was that's what he was hilarious. doing. That's hilarious. That's outstanding. Crazy. It blew me away. That's the power of social media. This is a guy on the other side of the planet breaking the cardinal rule. Yeah, that's like you do not talk <laughs> to say the most ridiculous catchphrase of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it. You've got it made. Yeah, it's better than any YouTube award. I'll give you that. I think that's honestly the most impressive thing I've ever heard a YouTuber say. Isn't that crazy? Yep. Like yeah, it, hands down. A Queen's guard. Yeah. No, I'm a big deal. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> I always wanted to turn that bit that, that story into a bit on stage. I might do that one day. It's a very but, good story. You could just tell that beautiful story. Beautiful story. Yeah, just tell that story. More whiskey, yeah. gentlemen? Yeah. We're running low. We might need to crack another bottle. Um Lordy, do you like this? You're a bit of a connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> there you, go. you had your chance. <laughs> Lordy, you got your pick. Open a new bottle, you big fucking hero. Just don't touch the whiskey gun. It's too hard to load. Um, I did have some questions for you, gentlemen. My main question to you, Neil, was about the about the Rhone. Mm. Um, want to know? Okay, I've still got it. AMS. You've still got it. Yeah. You will soon too. You will soon know everything you need to know. That <laughs> question will be answered. It's still in my beard. I didn't get your beard mask, so oh, it I've might got, still I've be got beard oil. Can you get some um, beard oil, please, Lordy? This is um, some bloke, right? I don't know who this guy is, uh, but he sent me 150 of these bottles. actually would love to try this. It's called Sexy Love Panther Beard Oil. Oof. Take two because I've got too many. I don't Sexy know what. Love can I put it on now? Yeah, go for it, right? go. I don't wear it because it makes it, not this particular brand, but any beard oil makes my skin break out with psoriasis because I got a bad psoriasis. Well, pretty, I'm a pretty ill person. <laughs> I will get corona, corona if I'm dead. Because stiff breeze could knock you over. Oh mate, it's, it's all over. <laughs> but yeah, he sent me these and they're very good. So he also sent me what about this? Sent me a photo, a signed photo of Chuck Norris. Fuck yeah. I gave it to my brother. Sounds like a real man's man. I gave, I gave it to my brother for Christmas and Jonas goes, wow, did you pay for that for me? I said, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> said, look Ooh. at you. Ooh. Smooth. Ooh. Fuck yeah. I love you oh, with a beard. Look at that. Nice little Xerxes beard. Is that <laughs> what it does? <laughs> nice little triangle there. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I like that. How big's your beard been? Is that the longest it's been? This is probably the longest it's, keep it's been. Keep yeah. it going. Keep it yeah, going. Yeah, yours is very impressive. How long have you grown it for? Uh, I haven't shaved since I was twenty. Do you trim it? Do you get like beard? Yeah, I trim just it? trimmed it recently because it was getting when I was running. It, it was a bit hot. It gets long. Mm. Pretty easy top. Well, in that but another shameless fucking pr- promotion of my own. Um, that photo there. That's how long it was there. It was very long there. Thick. It was very thick. Mm. It gets luscious, but I never use any product in it. That's Natural. the thing. People think um, I use like a beard oil. Steroids. But I just, you of dirty beard growing. Just, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dirty beard grower. But yeah. Very well maintained. Thank you. Mm. It just, I wake up and it's like, it's just, I don't know. I was made to have. Blessed. <laughs> blessed. Genetics. But I'm losing my hair. Swings and roundabouts, mate. So. You're losing your hair. How's your hair going? I think I've just got Putin's hair. I was really... <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you look at babies that are born in the Slavic region where I'm from and they've got that like hair. You know what I mean? They all look like little vampires. All of them. (laughs) 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 You were a male model. Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, you didn't? So, no, t- so was. I love your video about you being a male model. I've watched it like two or three times because I showed Claire thing? one day and she was like, what the fuck? And in Korea. Yes. Mm. You, Amongst other places. How did, how <laughs> did, how did, how did that happen? <laughs> what's that? Take us through that whole journey. How did you become a male model? Well, I was discovered. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Prince Andrew. Who discovered? <laughs> The discovery you want at that age. This is nice. Uh, I think I was in Good, year 12. Ooh. I was on the train. <laughs> Were you over 18? On the train. It was no, pretty I was Andrew. 17, I think. Ooh, Might have been 18. That's uh, her, la- her name was j- 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 Fuck. And what's the c- name? Rolf. Ghislaine. Rolf. 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 Rolf what? Maxwell. What's, what's happening? Ghislaine Maxwell. We're joking about you being groomed. Oh, right, of course, yes. <laughs> a pedophile joke. Very good. Thank you very much. Whose I'm show are you on? <laughs> um, yeah, I was I was discovered on the train. Uh, <laughs> I, I uh, tried to make a big deal of it. I thought that it would get me a lot of chicks, so I told people in high school, but I found out that this is how it works, right? If you are a female model, you become instantly more desirable. If you're a male model... You're a laughing stock. Gay. <laughs> that was mm. honestly, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's weird, isn't it? If yeah. you're a male model. Any guy who looks after himself, if there's a skincare routine or he looks yeah. after himself, gay. It, it's like uh, a, and it's, now I just look back at it and it's just like, dude, Zoolander is the funniest movie of all ever. time. It's a great movie. Ever, ever, Zoolander ever. 2, not so good, but Zoolander do 1's that? good. Why do straight dudes think it's like a gay thing? Anyone for, who looks after himself. I think particularly, like, I don't know, where we're from, it's like very working class. It's, it's hilarious like, if you though. Yourself, you are if you moisturise, you'll get your drowning in pussy if you moisturise and yeah. you've got just yeah. working class guys going, yeah. what a boof yeah. Like, fuck off, mate. Yeah. You fucking idiot. Yeah, no, you know, actually, the guys who look after themselves do a lot 100%. more rooting. hundred percent. A lot more rooting. Idiot. You're just playing the pokies every night. The you guys with the mother, like the mother energy. The yeah, mother like, energy, yeah, smoking yeah. durries, <laughs> eating, yes. eating yes. big man's palmies, frozen meals from yeah. Woolies. You yeah. fucking ignorant. It's a good life. Honestly, it makes me sick. And you're, anyway, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry, I'm just talking to my subscriber base at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I when I got in, in strife for that Jew joke many moons ago, I had a whole. I had dudes <laughs> from, that that come from. I was just thinking Did about. <laughs> I got in trouble for the for the Jewish joke about the Holocaust, and I um, I had a whole. Um, it was a celebration for a bar mitzvah. Come to my show, because in because people said to me, "Oh, you hate Jewish people." I said, "I am from Newcastle. I have never met a Jew. <laughs> no. I have never met a Jew. I, I don't know. There's many. Hasidic do you know Jews. any Jews? No, there's no. There's big Hasidic Jews. You're from Jewish Sydney. Do you like. know Jews? Yeah, one or two. One or two. Do you mm. know Jewish people? I live in Bondi. Yes, I do. It's basically just <laughs> the Israel of the Southern really? Hemisphere. You yeah, grew yeah, up in Newcastle. Yeah, I grew up in Newcastle. Never met a Jew. No, I well, I, I have you ever walked past one of the guys with? And the that's big why the houses like, are cheap. Don't touch pork. <laughs> never, no, never. Don't touch pork. Not even with the fuck. <laughs> Can't touch this. <laughs> so that's why I found that whole thing crazy. But the people that come to my shows are all different people, and that's why the, I was just blown away that people would say that. But to your point about the kids, to so the dick stinks and all that type of stuff, I'm always blown away by the people that watch like this video. You'll have people who are the bogans who'll be like, nah, you fucking moisturize, oh, you're gay, and that type of stuff who'll watch it and then listen to this is going, oh, that's not, that's not me. I'm not that type of bricky. It's you. Yeah, and it's- you have other people who are Jewish people or who are doctors or who are this or that. It's so amazing the type of people that you have the ability to reach, the ability that you have to reach with your type of content, with your type of content, not so much with Triple M. <laughs> Or just sort of yeah. out of finger fans. It's the brickies. <laughs> that is the brick <laughs> so, so They're point, not moisturising. People who think red hot chilli peppers aren't bad. <laughs> <laughs> they're living in the 90s. Yeah. I don't mind their the new song, new Snow. Yep. Um, yeah. but Steelworks, <laughs> Premiership, so that's, that's it. The, the, ability, is, is, the ability that we have is just incredible. Hang on, fucking back no, to you, the male model stuff. Oh, uh, okay, right. Don't point on. at me. This is my show. I'm doing the point. <laughs> Fox News was that moment. Sir, 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 <laughs> sir, you will stop talking. Um, sorry, what were you going to say? What was I going to say? When you were Where discovered. Was I? Oh, yeah, I was discovered. discovered. Then uh, I got acne and um, that <laughs> Career over. things for a bit. <laughs> he turned 18. <laughs> <laughs> Too old. So did you, go to, did you go to Korea? 
Yeah, well, I went all around Asia. Wow. Except for the, the mother of all Asia, which is Japan. Oh, That's where you go for the, the big stuff. And then your next move after that was Milan. But I was not in Milan. that league. Wow. I was not that level of male model. What were you missing? What were your attributes that you were lacking? <laughs> height. That really? was it. Height, height, for sure. Um, you, also, on top of that, my nose height looks too much like world. an onion. It needs to have that <laughs> nose. <laughs> These are all comments I've gotten over. Yeah, an onion. You didn't notice that, did you? Someone wow. else did. <laughs> like I've always thought you were, like I don't think you know. I think your teeth take it. Like they take away from the nose because you've got amazing teeth. Have you you've got, got great teeth. They're great Barry's. Yeah, they're, they're great Barry Booth. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're great, great teeth. Like that would set you apart from someone who is what are you six foot? If you if someone who's six two, six three, your teeth win. In acting, yes. But if you Modeling. looked at the top model in my time, which was Matthias Luridsen, he's mm, never yes. forgiven him. Fuck. That's not on Urkel in life. Yeah. Oh, that guy. <laughs> Matthias is so hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's never forgiven him. <laughs> Matthias And he was. And he was, but you look at him now. Who aged better? Matthias Luridsen. It's a fucking hot name. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? That's all it's fuck. Isn't yeah. it? Fuck yeah. His Gucci ad from 2007 really changed the game. <laughs> 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 a real pioneer. Oh, you really oh. should chuck that in. You yeah. girls, you look at that. Uh, you look at his turn. His turn to the camera, and um, tell me that you don't get moist. You know, <laughs> <laughs> buy one. <laughs> They're almost sold out quickly. Are there classes for that? What? How to turn your head properly as a male the model? Blue oh, well, your agent should cover that for you. You know, uh, but you do get your looks. Yes, you do. That's okay. a, that's really? a that's a real. Did you have, thing. A, did you have a signature? Like a signature look. <laughs> Give it to us. Come on. <laughs> Show us the look. Show us some respect. This, this is the what are we trying? Okay. Are you ready? I've lost it. Hang no, on. you haven't. Got You've got it, got it in there. You got it. Go, go. Just push it. Push away the labour shill shit and just think about your old self. Oh, I can't. <laughs> oh, I came. I came. Nicole Flint just I'm gay. gay. That's Nicole it. Flint just I'm gay. gay. I'm moisturising now. I am gay. <laughs> Nicole Flint is a, awesome. is a horny little bitch right now. <laughs> she is. She's a horny little That's bitch. Insane. She's a naughty little bitch. Um, <sighs> yeah, I, I think it's great that you, you've had such a weird career progression. It is weird. Can you tell them about the, the, the story of you on the boat, how they would – like all these rich businessmen would have male oh, models yes. on the boat so that they could be a bit more confident with the girls. Is that true? Yes. That is amazing. It was the best of both worlds because you weren't getting hit on, but you also had access to those ridiculously large bottles of vodka. That's yeah. Sick. You know, it was like a five litre Grey Goose. All that kind of stuff where there's wow. just all these nervous fat businessmen sitting there. <laughs> like, hey, do, do you like the beer? It's just like, you don't want to talk to me. Go, go, go talk to Chazelle over there. You know? Yeah. Are you that saying are. that women would prefer a rich person over someone they genuinely like with looks? Evidently. That's disgusting. <laughs> this is my problem with women. <laughs> well, de- you know what? It de- <laughs> Among many. <laughs> no, I mean, he doesn't need to sell merch. Yeah. He's, he's set. Yeah. yeah. That's I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, that, that was uh, something that I learned in the modelling world, which is that, uh, yes, Women do love money, but let me get more specific. Russian women love money. Because mm. it's cold. Because it's cold. Well, this is the thing. It's cold. It's hard to yeah, come it's by. Cold, it's so it's cold. Also this, like, man, it makes so much sense because they would date some dumpy little Chinese businessman that lived in Singapore or something like that. And I was always just like, why are you doing that? Like, because in my house I have dirt floor. Yeah. And it's minus 20 degrees. Yeah, fuck, it's cold, man. <laughs> Get your ticket out of there. Yeah, they will do anything. My, one of my friends used to, my housemate used to date a Russian, well, he probably does still date her, a Russian bird. And we came home one night and she was feeling sick. She had the flu or whatever. And she put potatoes on her face, like raw potatoes, and that was going to stop it. That, that was the best what? they had over That's there. That's what they do. They put raw potatoes on their faces. That's all they've got. That's all they do. Is. That's all a raw got. potato. She was laying on the lounge with just raw potatoes. I was like, what are you doing? She goes, oh, I'm feeling a bit zick. Yeah. So I put the raw potato. Accent's on, not your thing, eh? <laughs> I can do a great. Oh, you got to work on those. Yeah. I can do a great. I can do a great John Howard. Yeah, Janelle. She said to me, "This is the thing. <laughs> That's good. You've got to understand uh, uh, the Australian." Uh, <laughs> doubles up as the kangaroo from Blinky Bill. Yeah, also yeah, and everyone said it's also like Rabs Warren. <laughs> He'll score in the corner, <laughs> man, ladies and gentlemen. 
Oh, you said my, God, I love that man. My ending. Oh. Can, can you can't wait you do till Gus he dies. Gone. I want him no, to live forever. Gus, what? Right? You were always just being that. like, he's getting irrelevant, bro. He's been in the game too long. Who? <laughs> Who? Who? Where the Brad, fuck did I get a list from? <laughs> and say, bro, like, <laughs> what impression was that? He's the relevant bro. Uh, that sounds exactly what like you, man. I don't know. As soon as you moved to TikTok, you changed, man. Yeah. <laughs> you hit a million followers, and you're like, I'm better than everyone. Got to snap back, you know. Do you but isn't that what happened? Like, you isn't that because I love that man, but that's because I know nothing about the game, and I know a lot about mimicking people, and he's, that is a great voice. His voice, he's amazing. He's, he's the, the voice of right the league. Like, I used to do a joke, my my closing joke. Do you remember this bit? That I used to do uh, Rab's commentating porn. <laughs> no, I don't. That was my that closing joke great. when I first started doing stand up. Is and Gus it, Gould in there as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and so it's in my special. My closing joke, my first special was um, like he's commentating porn and like the going out yeah, vast up the middle. And then they finish and goes, That's not a cum shot, that's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. I wrote that one of my first Beautiful. jokes I ever wrote, and that was uh I just love that voice. It's beautiful. Isn't it? Can you do oh, Gus? No. Can you do Gus? Now, Gus is a bit nasally. And Gus he comes is- and he's like, I told you. I said it. I knew this team was going to win. From all reports. And he never said it. Gus is a Gus has looked unwell for a long time. One of the worst people I've heard. Really? I'll tell you off, off air, but he is a piece of shit. It's fuck you, Gus. Every <laughs> Bulldogs fan is not very happy to hear Ah, <laughs> fuck him. I hate the I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not a very nice person. But I've never heard an impression of me. You, you're good at impressions. Can you do an impression of me? Um, this would be good. Get out, you good motherfuckers! Yeah. I've never heard fucking an vegan came up to me the other day and <laughs> fuck. <laughs> And then I kicked a cyclist. <laughs> Mid dick stinks. Buy some merch. <laughs> yeah, buy some merch. <laughs> Peace in the Middle East. Peace in the Middle East. Forgot that one. All the bogans at shows come up and say, you didn't do any cyclist or vegan jokes. No, like Isaac, i gotta, I got to admit something to you, and right. I think you're going to kick me out of the house. Make you crawl. I think you table. can see, I, I think you can probably guess what's about to happen here. It's the beard. I have it? had a, I've been on a uh, plant-based diet for the last five months. Get my whiskey. So. Five months. Yeah. You and fucking. How is it? Great. Oh, <laughs> I can feel the soy all oh. throughout my body. No wonder you caught COVID, you fucking girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. Do you Got like it. it? Are you going to go back? No, I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. i got to say, Isaac, I am really scared of saying this, but yeah, I, I do feel a lot better not eating meat. Sorry. It does. Oh, I'm, just, I'm sure it's better for you. <laughs> like, who wants that? Listen, idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, roast me. Come on. Do you know why? I, <laughs> Listen, do you know why I talk so much shit about vegan? Is because every time I do it, the person I'm talking shit about reacts, mm. and then the whole community reacts. Smart. If they didn't react, I would have stopped three on. years ago. Just move on to someone else. If you're a vegan and I make a video about you, shut up, and then I won't do it again. It works. It gets views. It makes money. Buy my merch. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing that they haven't learned the first rule of the internet. What is that about vegans that they, like, I don't know. It's just like. Just don't react. I can't think of an example. Jaywalking. I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just trying to think. I'm like, drunk. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm pretty drunk. <laughs> this is what happened. You know where people you, where bagged us for the Vegan Gains podcast? Uh, did they? I don't know. Did uh, they? Because yeah. I loved that. Did you? Yeah. He was a weird, mate. He didn't. Fucking he, very weird unit. I heard the one you did with, um, what's her name? Vegan she was booty. good. Vegan yeah, vegan, vegan booty. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't like that. Oh. Where was the conflict? <laughs> there wasn't was, any conflict. Exactly. Because she was nice. It's hard. Because I was this is the problem. You to be like Hannity, you know? But I'm, but I'm an aggressive person when I'm on show. The problem with the podcast is I'm just normal, me. Yeah, it's mm. hard. And that's when they're true, not here, true. it's hard to be like mean. Yeah, I, d- I don't like being me. But that was what was really good about the dynamic between all of you with Vegan Gains. It was very, very uncomfortable. And he was easy. And he had oh. his good content. He was just like. He was a fucking queer. He sucked. He was. Yeah, he You've was. done a lot what, of homophobic the, things. Why? Why? You've it said was like, well, uh, oh, that's an expression. <laughs> no, but he was like, so to start, he was just so, um, like, belligerent. like at the start, he was just like, yeah, like, didn't want to be there. Oh, I know. At the start, I was like, mate, like, you, you 
don't have to be here. It was really, really like just not making an effort. It was such a chore and really like nasal and condescending. Yeah, he's, and like, he's just a fuck with His whole like, thing was you need to have a moral you substantive um, point to eating meat. And basically the th- we were just arguing with him and we got pissed. That was the problem. Oh, we bit. We like, had too he, many. He won. Like, he we was, had too many we beers. Had a few cans before we had too many like, beers, so yeah. we were just arguing mm. with him and turned to shit. But the problem with the morally substantive point you is, you know what? I think that that's a untapped YouTube goldmine. Is just debating people smashed. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. My, well, that was my argument. Drunk Anything debates. that they, don't yeah, debate like and that. make sure that they're completely sober as well. Yeah. 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 That was the best part. You guys just weren't taking it seriously no. yeah. at all. And that, Not only because we couldn't keep up, but we were quite drunk. We we're like, eh, fuck this. And there, and there was moments like that where you just like wasn't even engaging. It was just heckling and being like, "Shut up! <laughs> you said this already." <laughs> yeah, he, <that's> exactly. <laughs> he had lots of really well constructed points. Like, start eating a steak. We're like, boring. <laughs> <laughs> Say something else. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. And it was. And yeah. people were like, no, you didn't take him seriously enough. No, we didn't. I don't take that bike seriously. So he's, the, what's he's, wrong with that? He's not to be taken yeah. serious. The problem he's with the idiot. morally substantive argument for eating meat is we do things that aren't moral all the time. Oh, I couldn't even pronounce it, let alone Like you wear, wear, wear your clothes. <laughs> wear your clothes. Like the, cl- the clothes I sell for merch, all in China. Of course. They're not getting holiday rates. They're not getting penalty rates. They're jumping off buildings because they're not getting paid enough. We do things that aren't morally substantive all the time. And that is part of being human. If we were morally substantive all the time, we would be, we wouldn't be able to live. Well, Mr. Philosophy over here, and by that I noticed that in his what? bathroom he had like a, a book of 50 best philosophical ideas. So he obviously wow, knows you noticed that. Of in your bathroom. Yeah, every time I look at that I'm next like, to the I toilet and I don't know day. why. God, this, this shit really isn't coming out. I, I better look at some Jung. <laughs> Be like water. Thanks, Jung. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I've kept my- <laughs> <laughs> really helps me get it out. You know? Thanks, you. <laughs> Thanks, you. <laughs> uh, not Jung, whatever his name is. Who anyway, gives yeah, a shit? He's good. dead now. Yeah, but but what, what, what do you think? What do you think about? That? <laughs> what really is it? What do you think? Little like, if, if you're not doing something moral, what do you do? What are the what philosophers? Do you mean? What do you mean? What do you? What do the philosophers say out? about not doing something moral when you're? I have that book in there for like. Virtue signal. I don't fucking read it. <laughs> I just put it in there. Well, you're taking a shit. <laughs> Have you got a? When I was single, and then and then it was like, hey, got, yeah, it was a topic of conversation. It was like, oh, I do. Yeah, I'll actually, tell you I what, it works. It was yeah. chumming. Really, I think better of you because of that. And you I were chumming not, the water. Yeah. Exactly. You were and chumming the water. I haven't taken it out. I See, forgot that it's still there, but I'm glad you reminded me. So you've you've I read you've really read Jung on the toilet. You've grown a ponytail. You've stopped eating meat. Yes. You've caught COVID. Yes. You got a fine beard. Thank you. You At do what, too. Hey, baby. You love eating ass. I do. Is that the part of <laughs> See, that's <laughs> Is that part of a vegan diet? Can yeah. you eat ass on a vegan diet? Depends. Or you well, just um, who's, uh, who's ass are you eating? Yeah. If well, what you're if eating you're eating a vegan's ass? It should be fine. Should be fine. Is your but, partner um, vegan? Yeah, vegan gains. She's a not. Oh, so you're not vegan, baby. <laughs> vegan, Technically, bro. yet. Yeah. You're eating animal products. So you're not second hand. <laughs> you no! fucking. So I guess I'm not vegan after all. There we go. Neil Cole Hatka. Keep it you pig. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I love the morality, but I love eating us more. Yeah, so, that way. You know, yes. Well, I guess that answers it my question, you know. Yeah. Oh. Just screw the morals. Yes, Mr. Longface. That's actually what Jung said. What? It just it hasn't been published. He said, uh, everything eating I've said, ass. eating us is more important. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Eat ass first, ask questions later. I think yep. that was his. That's that was his really po- uh, qu- uh, butterfield. Gandhi yeah, said I it. Wonder he's like <laughs> Martin Luther, Luther King. Day. All of them. <laughs> Avid ass eaters. I have a dream that I'll eat ass. Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, <clears throat> so Barrel Arrow. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Ashley Madison. He does not eat ass. He wouldn't eat ass. No. There's no, no way. He'd be a selfish coward. lover. John likes to lick. He'd be a selfish lover. No, nah, Nicole true. Flint would eat ass. I. Don't think she'd have I any asses to eat. Don't think any liberals would eat ass. Nah, too too uptight. I think yeah. young liberals might. <sighs> Man, some of them would. I know. For some a real fact sickos, that. you reckon? Daddy's ass. There's a lot. You know, uh, what is it? American psychopath. Yeah, that's half of them. Yeah, half. Mm. And that guy would eat ass. Young what liberals. I'm saying is you're a psychopath here. <laughs> And I say that. Well, you know what? Or Neil. If, and a hypocrite. If it gets me ass in my mouth, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take the title. 
Is there any asses you've turned back, like returned like a mule? Like you said, no way, I'm not having that. No, the corn on it. Um, <laughs> Don't know, discriminate. It's a, it's yeah. a all you can eat buffet. <laughs> 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 He's on the sea ass diet. Well, I do not discriminate. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what about you? Is there any that you fuck? Uh, can you single days? No, I, I, um, yeah. <laughs> well, little Dixon's just joined us in the studio. I'd, Great time. I'd never, because Claire came up to me one day and she said, mate, you see this ass? And I said, yeah, mate. She said, you've got a fucking munch. And I said, let's go, baby. And yeah, then right. we'd never look back. Isn't that right, babe? <laughs> I've never called you babe either. Um, <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> hey, baby. I've never called a babe, uh, except when we're in a big blue. So, so Claire and I. Condescending. Claire and I have hey. never been in a fight. Oh, that's not healthy. Never. Hey, no. You've got, you got to have a blue. And how long have you been together? Seven years. Oh, you got You've that. never been in a fight. No, Claire? Never. Wow. That's I've never been. either. With Claire. I think I that not. is not with Claire either. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've had a fight with Claire either. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> Lordy has. Yeah. She's <laughs> Lordy has every day. <laughs> because we're best mates. And that's the big thing. That's fight the, with your best mates, though. Not like this. No, we don't. Behind my back. But no. the thing is, some every, at least one night a week, Claire and I will have this weird event happen. We were just heaps weird with each other. Like, we'll chase each other around the house, just like. Like, not in a, like an angry way. Just like, how would you describe it? Just like, it's heaps weird. It's like a jewel. Like, we're just fucking around. But our neighbours must think that I am the most <laughs> abusive person <laughs> in the world. Because Claire's like running out going, wow. <laughs> terrible optics. Like, if you walk past optics. this house in the middle of the night, no- not the middle of the night, that'd be weird. Um, but you would hear some things and just think to yourself, wow, that he is... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard that on the uh, microphone, but eating ass. Eating ass. We've had a great chat. We've had a good time. I want to end this podcast by mainly angling this question at you because you're a, a comedian. Mm. You're like me. There's no like real place you want to be. Like it's not like you want to change anything, do you? Don't sell yourselves short. Okay. Both of you do. Well, you can't not because that is part of being a comedian. It is nowadays, don't you think? Like I've changed mm. a lot in the last couple of years and doing a podcast with him has, has definitely influenced me. I always just, I, it was all just about jokes. I just want to be funny. Yeah. Just want to be, and I wanted to be an actor as well. I forgot about that. <laughs> you'd be a great actor. Garbage industry though. No, you'd be a good actor. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see you in but what industry Underbelly is there? or something. <laughs> Rock, something. Part yeah. two. What's, yeah. <laughs> what's left? The Australian yeah. film industry is great. It it's really, really, really good. Remember, there's some great roles for me. Yeah, yeah, there's great roles. Hey, be the refugee that everyone feels <laughs> sorry for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. We have a servo Be the, role be the guy that the bogan says racial slurs to. Great. I'd play the bogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, I, I think comedians have a very important role to play. We seem to be the only people telling the uncomfortable truths, whether it be about, mm. um, you know, identity politics to COVID to... Um, anything that's happening to politics, to that type of thing. But my question is to Jordan, where do you see yourself in 10 years? What is the point of your channel? I'll tell you what the point is. Good, because I asked the fucking question. Right, sorry, that's right. This is my third whiskey. Uh, how good is that? It is oh, such a right. drunk threat. Let me tell you something, Matt. Uh, hang on a second. What did I say about pointing? <laughs> hang on a fucking second. I... Uh, I don't make any secret of it either. I want the government changed and I want it permanently changed because if you go back and look at the history of Australia, everything that Australia should be proud of, the fact that we have Medicare and the fact that we got Medicare in the 80s. Other countries were getting it in the 60s when it was groovy to care about other people. The 80s was just about snorting coke, right? No one cared about anything else. We got Medicare then. It was because we had a Labor government in. You look at uh, the economic metrics every time, Top of the rankings when Labor's in, soon as the Liberals are in, bottom of the developed world. Every metric of government that you can look at, we're better under a Labor government. That's it. My entire goal is to get them in government and keep them in government because I know that that's how Australia gets built. The entire point, and I think that this is something that people need to understand about how democracies function. This has gone all the way back to ancient Rome. It's my next stand-up show, actually. Sounds like a laugh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it's not it's not it's just a lecture it's just a lecture that's it that's it Bring you're paying $40 for to lecture. go back to first year uni beautiful um, but 
But the point that I need to make to everybody is, because everybody's gone into, and this was a deliberate thing that was pushed in the Howard years as well, because they realised they could never really get rid of a huge portion of the population that hates them, but they can disperse and weaken their votes, which is a classic divide and conquer strategy, right? What you need to understand is that ever since we've had any semblance of a democracy, you go back to Greek times, you go back to Roman times, there's two factions. There's a faction that serves the public and there's a faction that serves the oligarchy. The oligarchy are landowners and bankers, always being the same. Julius Caesar, what did we learn in school? Type one of the new show, that he was a tyrant and he had to be stopped for the good of democracy. Reality of the situation was... He pissed off loan sharks and said, can you stop stealing land off the peasants to the landowners? And then they were just like, we've got to kill him for the good of democracy. And then democracy imploded in on itself. You know, like what I'm trying to get this main point across is that everyone's always like, oh, you're picking sides in politics. Fuck yeah, you're picking sides in politics. There is two sides in politics. There always has, there always will be. There is one that serves the elite. There is one that serves the public. That's what I'm trying to get into people's mind just that point because the entire press system is designed to distract enough people from that fact that's why you have a government in that does not serve you 70 percent of the time if there was just a display metric to metric of what these parties have done there is no way the liberal government would ever be in power ever because they just don't do anything for us you give me something that they have actually accomplished for the australian public I'll eat one of Isaac's hats because I don't have one. Thirty four ninety five on my website. Um, <coughs> Jordan, I love your content. Well done on a, on a big year last year. Congratulations! It was thank a tough you, one. The shit that you went through, Neil. I love uh, you. I can't top that. But no. yeah, it's a tough one to follow. I just, <laughs> just want to eat ass, man. Watch it a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna make uh, keep making videos about white girls. And, That's all right. Um, but there is there is there is time to talk. That's course. why I like making no. sh- topics about things that no one cares about. Because I love that shit. I love making a video that no one and you do the same thing. Mm. About I love it. ridiculous thing. Have you reviewed brothels yet? No, and I'm gonna do it. Good. Hurry I'm up. Do it. Um, we have to and cash converters. We have to end the podcast because Lordy said the SD cards are running out of room because I can't afford us. bigger SD cards. Please buy <laughs> my merch. <laughs> Neil Kalaka, thank you very much for making the trip up. Friendly Geordie, thank you very much for making the trip up. No worries, Louis, thanks boys. for coming over, big fella. I appreciate that. Week. I love you, gentlemen. <laughs> um, thank you. Cheers to a good show. Cheers. All the very best. Uh, Mid extinct, peace, in the Middle East. But see ya. <laughs> I hear him chat for the talking. I hear him chat with the boy.